Welcome. It's, it's 5 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices in the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, well, just to let everyone know that this meeting is recorded and is broadcast on TV. So if you're going to say anything or come to the mic, just you know, speak your name, who you're with, and, um, and what your question is clearly so everyone can hear. So I'll turn it over to, um, I'm Trevor McDaniel. Carolyn Ness. David Wolver. And I'll turn it over to the chairs of the finance and, and our town administrator. Uh, uh, Diana Schindler. Diana Schindler. Yeah, we can go around in a circle, but and then you guys can open your meetings. So. Okay. Julie Chalpa, Finance Committee. Mark Richard, Finance Committee. Jeff Upton, Finance Committee and Capital Improvement Committee. Uh, Skip Sobieski, Capital Improvement Committee. Skip Olmstead, Finance Committee. And Ken Cutterback, Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Welcome. And go ahead and open up your meetings. And the Capital Improvement Committee is calling a meeting to open for December 18th, Wednesday evening at 5.05. We have a quorum, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Oh, yes, there's four of us. Okay. And uh, I'll call the Finance Committee to order at 5.05. Great. Um, well, thank you all for, for being here. Um, you know, I'll just I'll run down the agenda a little bit, and we can kind of expand on these issues. But um, uh, this is a, a FY21 kickoff meeting uh, with the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvement Cl uh, Planning Committee to kind of get together what our thoughts are for projects moving forward for this year, and then also looking long term at you know all the all the issues that we have coming up in front of us. And we've got a few of those listed, um, you know, with the Tilton Library, a few things on the agenda. Tilton Library, the future of public works. Uh, Senior Center and then some of the planning stuff. So our first um, our first kind of item on this uh, agenda is the Tilton Library strategic plan. So um, I would like to invite up Candace um, to come on up and, and um, introduce yourself and do a little presentation on where you're at because I know yes. that we have a big project planned at some point. Yes. And so just see where you're at and well, how you're doing. Actually, uh, so my name is Candace Broadway Carlin and I'm the director of the Tilton Library. And I'm actually here tonight to present our strategic plan, which Great. took over the, the last almost year, I'd say maybe about 10 months, Great. to uh, put together and submitted to um, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, MBLC, um, October 1st. And so this is their plan for our starting um, 2020 through 2024. And um, I do have a PowerPoint slide presentation. Great. I did pass out to everyone here, um, this is a summary of the 40-page strategic plan. And to the chairs of each group, I uh, gave the entire plan. Both of these things can be found on our website at tiltonlibrary.org. So I'm um, just wondering, for presenting this, if yep. I sit here, is that going to be OK if I? I think oh, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Sure. yeah, make yourself comfortable, whatever. If you need me to hit any buttons, I can do that, too, if you'd rather. We can frequently turn our heads. OK, I won't feel rude then. All right, let's see. Okay, so can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically um, the strategic plan, the first question people might ask for a library is why a strategic plan? And um, it's a lot of work, so <laughs> we want to make sure we explain to people why we're doing it and what we got out of it. Um, first of all, it provides really good input for us from the community that we serve, because um, we don't you know, exist in a vacuum. We definitely, you know, we're, pub we're public servants. And, um, and we have a very vibrant community that, that uses the library. So we got feedback from the community. Um, and then to, to look at you know, what's going well and what could use improvement. Um, it is required by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, um, also known as the MBLC, in order for us to receive the state funding that we receive. And it helps us to budget, prioritize, and plan for the future. All right, so where to begin? <coughs> With you. <laughs> Um, so the first thing that we did is um, we had community meetings and surveys, and there were about 250 altogether, not including staff, board of trustees, and the friends. Um, and so we had three, no, two community meetings here at uh, Town Hall, and um, about 25 people each, about three-hour sessions, and uh, there was a consultant, a library planning consultant that worked with us, and she ran the show, and it was uh, a very 
thorough brainstorming session that, that funneled down to some real solid ideas. Um, the survey we put out um, at the library, um, through our newsletter, our website, you know, as many places as we, as we could to touch everyone in the community. And we had one focus for adults and one focus for um, teens and kids. So we had many, many voices, which is great. And um, like I said, we had about 250 uh, responses, recorded responses. And I just did a little um, kind of snapshot of things that we saw. Um, you know, one of the questions we asked was, what could the library do to make your experience more delightful? <laughs> and you can see the high um, scores here were um, a more diverse collection, library of things, which means that the library, you can check out things like a sewing machine or a ukulele, and a lot of other libraries have things like tools and mm -hmm. cooking materials, um, anything you can think of, practically. Uh, let's see, more programs for adults, open more hours, and more space for meetings and programs. And then over there to the right is um, the result of a few ideas that we got from those community meetings. Um, so we, what we did is we channeled all this into our plan. So um, as we took all the data that we got from all, the, all that feedback, we looked for some patterns. And so the patterns that we saw were that the community was asking us to be uh, both a center for and partner with the community, to keep growing and diversifying the materials, activities, and services offered by our library, to creatively develop and expand the library space, uh, ensure that library staff, trustees, and friends continue to grow in their roles and how they work together, and finally to investigate and garner resources in order to expand our offerings. So, then we started to come up with goals. Um, so, you know, we listen to our community, of course. We, um, the following goals are, um, well, for, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna, the, the goals here that I'm presented here are a summary. If you wanna see the whole thing, um, like I said, it's on our website, tiltonlibrary.org, or the chair of each committee here has um, a printed copy. So, and with the goals, so there's the goal, the overriding goals, and then there's what's called strategies, ways to implement the goals, and um, sample actions or activities to kind of give you an idea of actual things we'd be doing. So, goal number one, engaging and partnering with, partnering with our community. The library is central to the lives of our community members. And that little subheading there means that's our goal. We want to be able to say that with this plan that the library is central to the lives of our community members. And then below here, um, at the bottom here, are strategies. So community members help build awareness of the library, mean that we want community feedback for us to create materials that will, so we want, it, we want the, the community to inform us how to inform the community, so it's a, mm -hmm. a cyclical um, process. Um, to extend the library beyond the physical building, meaning that not everyone can get to the library, or um, you know, if we want to have a larger program in a larger space or to partner with someone in a different space. Uh, equity and inclusion, make sure the library is welcoming to everyone. Provide civic engagement, and I think that's just for me, for us what we thought was um, providing awareness, especially this coming year, census, election, mm -hmm. what do you need to know? Are you registered to vote, et cetera, et cetera and just making sure people have factual information to, um, to be involved with their civic duty. Mm -hmm. uh, partner with other groups in Deerfield and partner with other local, public, and academic libraries. So some sample activities would be um, deliver libraries to what we call homebound patrons, people that are recovering from surgery, people that have disabilities and it's hard, for, they can't drive or, or they don't have someone to drive them. Uh, we, can get, we can train volunteers to deliver materials to them. Um, create multi-generational programs. We like the idea of we have a schools on one side and the seniors on the other. Mm -hmm. Why not have them come to us and, and, and do some programming together? Um, promote awareness on the election process. Uh, one of the groups in town is the Deerfield Inclusion Group. So that's a group that we would be interested in, in joining. And then develop teen programs with other libraries. Um, other libraries around here that are bigger and have more staff, they have staff dedicated to working with teens, so we would love to partner with them to give programs to our teens. Um, 
Goal number two, activities and resources for our community. This is the crux of the library, it's what we offer. Anything from books to DVDs to music CDs to audiobooks and then all your digital collections and, and databases. So we want to um, really spread the word even wider if we can, so increase marketing of events, um, create drop-in activities. We do that now, but we want to expand that because sometimes it doesn't work people's schedule to sign up for a particular time. So just have something that's ongoing. Uh, continue to diversify our collection, promote technology usage and awareness, uh, expand and diversify programs for teens, adults, and kids, and then build awareness of everything that's available for our, through our library. So some sample activities would be um, expand our drop-in crafts, crafts supplies and projects. So I don't know if anyone's heard of um, maker spaces, mm -hmm. and oftentimes that's associated with like a, a 3D printer, but well, we're not ready for that yet but a maker can apply to anything that you do with your hands. So we'd like to um, expand the materials we have on hand, people to do that. Um, our library of things, we do have a ukulele, we have a sewing machine, uh, we'd like to have more things for people to have access to for free. Uh, we'd like to offer Tech Tuesdays, meaning you come in on a Tuesday, you sign up for a time mm -hmm. with um, one of our tech specialists, staff specialists, and they will um, have a list of things that they can help you with, um, anything from setting up an email account to um, working with you know, any of the uh, Microsoft Office programs. Uh, provide more programs involving animals. You wouldn't guess that with a library, but actually animals have been proven to really help people with literacy and with wellness. Um, there's a program called Pause for Reading, and that's when uh, dogs are trained to come and sit with a child while they read, and the child feels more comfortable doing that than reading to an adult uh, uh, person. Goal number three, our physical space and infrastructure. The library has the space and tools it needs to serve people with diverse interests and abilities. So we want to continue to address the need for more space and better accessibility, uh, update and expand library technology, find ways to use the space that we have now, expand library's role as a respite from hectic life, and that, I should point out, is something that came up a lot in our feedback. People were saying, you know, we live in stressful times. And the library feels like a respite, but wouldn't it be great if it could feel, if you could provide more, expand upon that? And so we thought we, thought we could. So that's a, a goal for us. Uh, focus on environmental sustainability and how the library operates. So some sample activities as um, the, to further promote positive impact of an expanded library, which has been in the works now for a couple of years, I'm sure all of you know. And we're probably a couple of years out for it becoming a reality. Um, Faster Wi-Fi, uh, because of our shortage of space, to see what we can do about hosting more outdoor um, programs or after-hour programs. Um, create the uh, anti-stress zones to go towards the um, respite, of uh, the library being a respite. Uh, model and explore energy efficiency. And finally, um, there's two more goals I mentioned, but they're more internal goals. And those you can find on the uh, printed out version of the strategic plan as well as on our website. And there's the address. And that's it. That's great. Anyone have any questions? I just want to comment. There's a wonderful presentation. It's good to see the things that you're thinking about and working on and yeah. expanding services to, to us. Um, I think one of, the, one of the things maybe this group also is interested in is you touched on a little bit the um, you know, the state's plan and your plan for when when you think you might um, you know I know expand and green, you know Greenfield is a large I know has been played a large role in kind of when we would hear and when we did yeah. and it sounds like that is moving forward for them mm -hmm. so you know as we're looking tonight and start talking about our kind of next year's budgeting plan but also you know five years out um, where do you, th you know, we, and we know design comes first, all that kind of thing. We've always been kind of trying to figure out and where to, where to peg, start pegging the design figures in, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, just trying to make sure that everybody in town is aware of the impact to them mm -hmm. financially and the benefits that they would gain out of this and sure. kind of when that would happen. And I don't know if you've heard anything in the meantime of, you know, where you are on the list still and where you might be going, or maybe you still have to get back to us on that no, stuff. No, I can so. give you a brief update. Um, okay. we haven't, nothing's changed a lot since July. Every July, you know, fiscal year, is yep. when we hear from the state funding agency, the MDLC, about where we are on the list. Yep. And so we're number five. We moved up two spots from last year, Okay. Uh, which is good. Yep. We do have, well, 
Well, Greenfield, yes, they went forward, so um, so they're keeping that money. Yep. And then the Jones Library in Amherst is a is a very big, um, expensive project, and we're not sure about that because they have some competing uh, buildings in town that need some uh, repair or renovation. Yes. So we don't know about that. Um, and I would and say. Are they above you as well? Yes. Okay. They're number two. They're number two. Yes. And so it all depends on how everyone does the next year in their town, getting yes. uh, fundraising and getting um, you know, the vote from their town for um, municipal funding. Right. And so, and I think all the, all the towns meet at different times, so yep. we just keep alert. And we do have a rep at the MBLC who keeps us um, updated. And then the Capital Campaign Committee, which is a committee that formed uh, when this project began, and they're uh, largely a fundraising arm for this project, um, they, we kind of, um, sat back last year because we felt like we were, we were too low on the list to do mm -hmm. anything that um, was impactful. But now that we're moving up, we started meeting again, and yep. I think that probably in the new year, pretty soon, we'll be coming to some town meetings to see, talk to all of you guys yep. and um, talk about our um, awareness and marketing plans, to spread <coughs> and yep. then also fun, uh, further fundraising okay. uh, plans. And so, um, so we're kind of like back back in the groove is what I would say, and feeling hopeful um, that probably around two years out, but yep. don't know. Understood. So. Do you, um, you know, I know you'll probably have uh, meetings before the Finance Committee coming up. Do you see any um, anything that, um, any major changes in how you operate over the next, you know, next budget year, FY21, where you would have an impact on well, I, think, I, I am going to submit my budget. I'm still working on the budget. Yep, understood. And, and there, this is, is early. there is something that, um, about some staffing because we have some increasing needs with technology for the patrons. Yep. And one of our staff people who's very, very part-time um, is really good with that. She would be the person I want to help do the Tech Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So I want to increase her hours. Yep. Um, so I am you know, finalizing that and probably will come to whenever the next yep. final okay. committee meeting would be. But yes. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Any yes. other questions oh, people have? More questions. Uh, a couple of quick ones. Uh, sure. If Jones's library is number two on the list, where is Deerfield? Uh, we're five. 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 Yeah. yeah. You said that. I'm sorry. Yep. I no, that's okay. Yes. <laughs> and then I know that the cost, the total cost of the project at one point in time was approximately $9 million. Is that still? Uh, no, seven million. Seven million. Yeah. So the have the state gives fifty percent. Okay. So that would be three point five. And um, to date, we have about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in pledges. Um, a small percentage of that we've actually received, okay. but most of it is pledges. And so what we're doing now, the capital campaign committee and I, we're moving forward to go back into um, soliciting more donations, so that we can try to make as big a dent as possible to the amount that we want to ask the town for. Great. Yes. You say that you want to expand an outreach so you can bring other groups into the library. For what? What kind of groups? Oh, um. The reason I asked that question was because when it first started to form a committee to look at this thing, they looked at the idea of maybe they could do something jointly with the senior center. And the library came back and said, absolutely not. You can't let the senior center in there. Oh, for the funding. You oh, know, oh for funding. space, yeah. yeah. For the space, right, when yeah. they were going to expand, right, yeah. but we joined the two, right. The I reason for it is because you've got a, based on the current plan, you've got a big kitchen in there. The question is, what do you need a kitchen for? I could see a little kitchen, but not oh. a big kitchen. And I don't, I can't see cooking classes. Now you're competing with the schools. And then you have a room that's probably larger than this for an all-purpose room, and I, when I look around the town, I see a big all-purpose room at the fire station. We've got a big all-purpose room right here. We've got big all-purpose rooms in the schools. I mean, we have duplication upon duplication upon duplication. And the question is, do you need that? And then when I was looking at the plan, it showed all these big, fancy windows, which is a big heat loss. So you say the right words, but yet the plan doesn't meet up with what you're saying. Um, well, yeah, I hear your concerns, but I think what I'd like to do is to um, direct you to when we have a meeting with the Capital Campaign Committee, and we can have, because we're going to have uh, frequently asked questions, and that's definitely one of the questions that comes up, and it's a fair question, because we are part of a, a community. So um, I'm imagining probably sometime in January we'll be coming and we'll be doing a, a detailed presentation 
on that and answering questions such as that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Okay. Thanks so much for the presentation. Yes. Really Candace, thank, thank you. I, um, I think it would be really great to um, have you come really regularly. Oh, yes. As an update. Yes. That would be very helpful, I think. Yeah, that's our plan. Because, you know, it's just getting the information out of course. to the community. Yeah. yeah, we can't stay in the bubble. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, a couple things that I was wondering um, when you were doing your presentation, I was um, just thinking you could partner maybe with Barbara on the census because, you know, uh, yeah. we want to make sure that we're getting everybody counted. Mm -hmm. It's huge for us. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose another representative. So mm -hmm. um, right. I, didn't, I didn't know if maybe you would be able to have, you would see people or do something that we could have a little... Well, I'm going to be attending a webinar sometime in the coming weeks, maybe I think after the holidays, mm -hmm. about the library's role in census. And right. it's pretty big. Yes. The library's yeah. role is pretty big. Good. So I'm totally open to having um, overlap with other town departments so that we can awesome. join forces. And yeah, we need it. That, yeah. that would be, I just think that would be really oh, wonderful. Sure. Anything that would facilitate it. I mean, I, Barbara would just, I'm, I'm sure she would appreciate the help. Oh, sure. And then um, the other thing that we were, um, I've known you've done some of the programs for climate change. Mm -hmm. And we're, through the MVP program, we're doing um, uh, Deerfield 2030 mm. on February 29th. Oh. And, and you know, there's a lot of activity around that for the 350th and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. So um, uh, I was wondering if you were interested in that, we'd reach out to you oh, sure. and try to yeah. do something with the library on that. Oh, too, I love cause, that. Yeah, because yeah. we did have, like you, like you said, there was a week, it was a, a statewide um, initiative to get awareness about you know, climate change, and we had three programs. Good. But um, you can't just focus one week out of 52 right. weeks on that. So I, know. I would love to do more. Well, we're trying to, this is going to be a community, all day community event with breakout right. sessions and stuff. So I just was thinking, as you were mentioning it, I was thinking, wow, this would be a good mm -hmm. time to do yeah, a partnership. We and, would love that. And, you know, carry over some of the information that we're hoping will come out of yes, that day. That would be great. Okay, yes. thank you. So let me know. Okay. Right. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank Have a great you. night. Yes, thank you, you too. Good. So um, next on our agenda is the future of public works. So we have, um, we've been talking a lot about, we have, a, we have a lot of projects going on that affect <laughs> Kevin, right? I know, right, there's a headline, the future. Kevin's just about ready to walk out now. No. <laughs> Come on up, Kevin, how are you? Kevin, You must hi. be uh, exhausted, and I first want to thank you and your crew for doing an amazing job these last couple of weeks, especially uh, the last couple of nights they've been hitting you. I know, Every time I turn so around, there's another inch on the ground. So yeah. <laughs> it's just really icy. It's been interesting. Yeah, I bet. So I appreciate you being here. I know you must be exhausted. You've been up probably 24/7. So um, we we wanted to talk a little bit about and talk to you a little bit about. I just want to hit off on this agenda, just the, the things that we're working on: um, operation and equipment updates, um, complete and green streets initiatives, the LED street lighting program, um, the. EVIP grants, which is the charging stations, um, the Leary lot development, uh, town buildings assessment feasibility study, culverts, culverts, and then culverts, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> transfer station, <laughs> composting, the recycling stuff going on, the solar on the landfill, um, and then the wastewater treatment stuff. Uh, you, you're, you're getting run ragged. I, I just know how much is on your plate and what it's you're busy. touching every day. And, a lot of people don't understand how much you're actually doing and we're all doing trying to figure this stuff out. So we really just wanted to hit on these items and, and give people an update, capital improvement, finance, the general public, the different things we're working on and where we're at on each of them. So um, did you, do you have anything you want to add to that or do you? Sure, no, I just, please? I think in the context of, you know, we wanted to make sure that when we're um, at the finance committee and capital improvement um, in front of those groups, that when we're asked questions about the, the pieces of operations that are affected for maintenance or for equipment that we've had, um, you know, we've sort of had this discussion first, like all the mm -hmm. things that we're trying to undertake because, um, you know, I'm in, I'm in meetings all the time with Kevin, you know, working on these initiatives and we're planning for, you know, adding what seems like a level of service 
delivery from public works that we're not doing right now just mm -hmm. from the mere fact of adding these components adding green and green infrastructure adding sidewalks adding you know talking about complete streets so along with that we need to talk about the operations and the equipment requirements for those things both human human requirements for human resources and equipment resources to maintain those those things if we build them because mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about doing, building those things. And the same with buildings themselves. The other thing that a big responsibility that Kevin has in his department is buildings right. and town buildings. We're talking about creating, doing an assessment. We're going to find out, you know, get a report basically that tells us a capital plan and a, and a maintenance report for these buildings. So once we know that information, you know, we're gonna be expecting to do something with that information. So mm -hmm. um, with all that said, in the coming years, um, you know, we just want to give you some context for the budget, you know, the budget things that may come up around mm -hmm. that. And we'll have to make choices on what, what we want to tackle and what we can right. afford to tackle and how much we're putting on, on right. different people. Exactly. That's the last, that all of this stuff is on the list, Trevor, and you may need to prioritize. Like, mm -hmm. there's demands for all of these things, but it's so much stuff, you may not <clears throat> be able to. And I'll just know. preference a lot of this discussion, this discussion with a thought. I had, and I think I talked to Jeff about, of, of maybe pulling um, one or two people from each of the boards here to kind of get together on our own and maybe then report back out to um, all the boards um, a prioritization of our projects coming forward. Because we have, we have an immense amount of work and we're already, you know, everybody understands the sewer is massive and we still are ignoring one half of it we still need to deal with. Um, and then, you know, just all the different, like solar and all that stuff. And we really need to get together, you know, I think to try and do it with everybody in one room at one time is gonna get a little hectic. So we thought maybe if we grab one person from each board, spitballed the ideas and came up with it and then just brought it back for discussion and, and, and revision. And if people wanna change stuff, I'm open to anything. I really am not, there's nothing that has to be, you know, other than sewer has to be on number one on the list. Um, but just, you know, just try to, try to get some input from people that really get a, a five-year action plan going. So, you know, Barbara needs to know how much money we're gonna borrow. And, you know, we really need a calendar of, of the expenses going out and what we're gonna tackle. And I know that's really our job, but we need help. So um, would appreciate that kind of input. So if anyone's open to that, I'd love to see that happen. Um, I know you were in favor of it at one point. Too. Trevor, yeah, I'd just like to follow up on that because I've been talking about this for, you have. since I've been involved here with the town for yep. ever, what, five years or whatever. And I just think it's critical that w we need to really sit down and figure out what's on our list. Because even this year, we already have several items on our list, but we're adding more to it, and yet we're not getting a whole lot done. Yep. Plus, not only are we not getting a whole lot done, we're having trouble planning for it. And if you can't plan for it, then you Never can't figure out how we're gonna pay for it. Correct. So, I mean, all this comes together at some point, if we're gonna be serious about this. We are. You know, I, yeah. I agree yeah. with you 100%. You gotta get some key people together, sit, sit down in a room, let's do up that list. Make a let's prioritize. Yep. And then bring it back and let's weed through it and figure out a long-term plan. Mm -hmm. And also, it'll help us figure out how we're going to budget right. for it. Can we budget for everything? Or right. What, what I mean, we, wait, what has right. we may not be able to touch some things for several years. <clears throat> right. Yep. But, but we need to know that right. we're coming because when. With what we're talking about, we have to remember that the taxpayers are the ones that are going to have to pay for it. Absolutely. And it's going to come down to what we can afford. Yep. It's, it's almost right back to what I said a long time ago. This want town to has to figure out what the needs are and what the wants are. Mm -hmm. And once you establish the needs and the wants, then you can start to put together a game plan to yep. address it. Yep. So there was one piece that you left out. Oh. I think it was left out because you weren't aware of it. Uh, but I'll make you aware of it, and then <laughs> we can talk about it later. Uh, for the last week or two, uh, I've talked with Kevin and Diana about clerical support yes. for Kevin's operation. Agreed. So, yeah. uh, And the personnel board met Monday, and we talked about it. And uh, 
I think we all agreed that it was needed. Exactly what that is, I mean, right. that's going to be up to you. Um, but we're, you know, looking at something part time mm -hmm. uh, that would then take over some of the financial duties that are being undertaken by your office, office. Yep. and free up the person that's there. So we can talk about that later tonight, sure. or we can talk about it. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. In the future, that's, yeah, that's but this is problem. this is exactly what you know. So, in addition to what um, what Jeff was saying about the projects themselves and prioritizing, I really want to emphasize that the change of operations mm -hmm. and and attending to making sure that we look at the budget and how we operate each year as we right. develop or change you know these things as well. And that's kind of what Skip's alluding to. Like right. we need to look at you know maybe some support staff and and how we can attend. It'll, it'll also give us an opportunity to find out what's cost effective and what's not. Right. We may find that, yeah, the town, the highway department can do some of this, but some of it may require a lot more man hours than they can already provide. Right. And we may find that it'd be a lot more cost effective if we subcontracted. Some and, items. You know, right. yeah, and I'm not saying everything, but I'm, I'm saying we need to look at that mm -hmm. as an option mm -hmm. because Obviously, you only have so many man hours in a, in a week, right. and you only can get so much done. So at some point in time, with everything that we're talking about here, there's no way that one department's going to be able to handle all that. Mm -hmm. Just right. not going to happen. Right. right. No, and, you know, I brought up in previous meetings, and I've actually had discussions with Kevin a little bit about it, that, you know, it's not cost effective to have him doing building. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. You know, you've got somebody with an immense amount of talent that has to be sitting at a desk, going through mill, uh, bills and everything, categorizing them, mm -hmm. and then coming over here and reviewing them. That's taking up a lot of time that could be used other places. Well, we've, we've even talked about that as far as lawn <coughs> mowing. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we subbing that out in, you know, or hiring some part time to mow the lawns? That, eat a, that eats up a lot of hours. Whereas you were saying, oh, no, that's what we the did people with a specialty year. could be doing additional jobs that require those, you know, unique skills. Let's face it. Yeah. Why? It just would be more cost effective to do something like that. So that may be a, a separate kind of kind of get together and tear down into what you know maybe yeah. unco uncomfortable to in some situations, but there, really just to go through that yeah. stuff and figure out where where time's best spent, try to make your life easier, for there, sure. <clears throat> Kevin and I have been done. talking about that sort of more in a current way, but then some of what concerns me is talking about the green infrastructure that we've been talking about building and the requirements of maintenance with that, that we right. are committing to and the type of equipment that may be needed. And, you know, we just, I want to get that out there too, because right, we are, sure. we are actually, you know, have grants that are uh, designing this infrastructure. So we are planning to, to, you know, implement some of this. And I know um, that's something that's come up a couple of times. We're talking about doing a green, uh, per, the pervious pavers, especially, mm -hmm. I think we don't know a lot about the, or we know Carolyn's been to a workshop. We know a lot. We know some of the maintenance, but we don't. We haven't delved into the maintenance issues and what we're taking on, mm -hmm. you know, as we start to add that infrastructure. So th it's just doing more than what we're even doing now right. um, is the concern. So um, I guess. Well, do, do we want to just give everybody an update on where we're at on, on the items on this list? And I think that that'd probably be a good place to start. I don't know if oh. Kevin wants to start with any like operations and equipment stuff. Go ahead and or... pick a topic and I'll speak to it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Kevin, why don't you just run down the list then? Well, yeah. I, I don't have the list. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. it's on the agenda. <laughs> yeah. Pick a topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give you a couple. Sorry, Kevin. Okay. So what I can, yeah, I can Thank start you. you off. So, um, I think, uh, well, we, we could hit a couple of these, too, like complete streets and mm -hmm. green streets. Yep. We may know a little bit yep. more than where Kevin's at on, right, right. on some of that stuff. Yep. Do you so, want sure. to so, give us an update where we're at complete right. streets? So, <clears throat> so complete we streets, we're on, we've been doing a Tier 2 prioritization plan, which is now completed, and we've received a final draft that has the estimates. So we're planning a meeting for January, a public input session, to discuss what the plan looks like, what the priorities are, and if we want to change them. We also are, we were intending to 
to scope a project um, out and use our design money that we have in FY20 already budgeted to hopefully build a, a construction project using complete streets funding, and we'd identified that section. We talked about this last week at the capital planning between Leary lot and the corner uh, in front of Chess that runs in front of Cheslick's market. So that's kind of a little, that's uh, the number one uh, project on the plan is around the common in that whole intersection in terms of accessibility and uh, sidewalks. So we've picked that as a, as a point to start and hope that we can do that. Um, in addition, we are talking about the Green Streets piece under an MVP grant where we've also, we've developed some, uh, we've talked about tree boxes and some rain gardens. I think tr mostly the tree boxes also in the Leary lot and in the center of South Deerfield. So Kevin has gone on that site walk and they've cited those. Um, and so those are intended to be installed, I think, in the coming year. So those, um, you know, Kevin's aware those require some maintenance, but even those kinds of structures do require a different kind of maintenance than, you know, we've been used to providing. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at with complete and green streets so far. And the LED uh, street lights. So we, we have um, looked at changing over the street lights to an LED system. Um, there's a, um, Paul Vessel is a, is a, Consultant. First, consultant for, for a, a company that kind of helps towns kind of f figure out what the cost is and you know what we have for an inventory and we have some of that but we were thinking about do we want to budget that first part of that study yeah. um, the, and then implement, implement there's a gentleman after. Reed Predmore who's on the Energy Committee who's been actively working on the streetlights issue he's gotten information from me and Kevin I think Kevin just recently got an updated proposal to purchase the streetlights from Eversource so we have been actively working on that as well that would also have a maintenance component if we took the street lights right. on. There's a cost associated with the upfront purchase, and then there is a maintenance cost. Right, down the road. But you know, I think in the long term, it, it would pay for itself, but it does take some money up front to yep. do something like that. Um, and and in, in doing that, we would talk about, you know, are there places that we took them out last time or some that aren't? I know just on my street, I have like two or three that just don't come on. So, and I think they did a couple, a couple weeks ago. So or months ago. So, you know, we just inventory what, what's coming on, what's not coming on. We did remove some, I think, as a town maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. There was some excess and we we're trying to save energy and stuff. So that, that was done, but we would explore that again and, and see what's going on with that to make sure we have adequate lighting. A lot of people are using our sidewalks now. We want, you know, want to make sure that they're lit up. Um, the charging stations yeah. we so have. So we do have costs. So we, we do, we have been working actively uh, pursuing a location for one charging station, at least right now being the Leary lot. Again, you know, uh, we're trying to get that um, surveyed and developed. Um, there is an initial cost to the town of about $5,000. Um, perhaps we're still exploring vendors and maintenance, but, um, but you know, again, there's some initial costs. So it's right. hard it's to, you know, that's not necessarily a capital, you know, it, uh, I want to put that in a budget somewhere, but I, I'm not sure how far we're going to be able to get in 21. I mean, we've got right. to figure out the Leary lot boundaries and, and put, some you know infrastructure in there but that's this is something that the energy committee has been working on for several months and they're very anxious to have the town support um, you know this initiative so mm -hmm. we also have been um, we talked about putting charging stations at the schools and I think we're leaning maybe away from that but mm -hmm. we have been working with um, Eversource and DCR about the potential of putting a charger at the bottom of Mount Sh the Sugarloaf parking area so they that's plan um, to redo that uh, hopefully next year because those potholes you could lose a car in they're just gigantic so we finally um, we help coordinate some discussion between Eversource and DCR and DOT and they're looking to kind of clean up the bottom of that and kind of either pave it or get it kind of so you don't you're not lost in a big pothole or puddle when you pull in there um, and the thought was you know that could be a spot that people would put a, a charging station in but that's not that's not us. So. And that we we don't own. In there, it would be a state. Well, well, the pro we don't own the property, but they would be. They're asking us, or EverSource and DCR mm -hmm. envisions the town would be a, the host. We would still be the site host, but we wouldn't own the property underneath. 
So, so that's a big, you know, that's a lift. I don't know if we'd want to do that, but they, they we love have to make sure idea. we're not on the hook for the yeah. infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's or, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'd build the want. infrastructure, but we'd have to maintain it or something. Right. But right. the, for the most part, the infrastructure is put in by EverSource. They'll they go from the pole down over to the pedestal. And the pedestal is basically where, where uh, Diane's been talking about with the $5,000. There are some DEP grants that help offset some of that, but yeah. there's no guarantees to it. So that's why you, if you're going to budget, you need to budget a, a full price. And if it comes in under, that's great. But if not, then at least you're prepared instead of saying, well, we think we can get some grants. So we're only going to ask for 2000 And then three weeks later, I come back and say, well, the grants fell through. I need another 3000 It's I just soon ask for everything up front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we get less, and if we get the grants, right. if you want the project to go forward, it depends on what the appetite of the town would, would like to do. Exactly. Right. We're so it's, if they like to do like, it, this is what we'll do, this is what it's going to cost, and if not, And then, right now, this whole thing is like that picture where you have the square and the triangle and the circle all on top of each other. That's how they're all balancing, like, these grants and stuff. So you can't, like, we have to budget the money, basically, and then put all the pieces in place. Like, you have to, you can't basically do it all and then just wait, you know, hope we get the the money. We have to kind of know what we're going to do before we can do it. So then we decide it. if that's a want or a need. Yes. You know? So yeah. then, so that, that's moving forward on that. Right. Um, and then the Leary lot development is the last thing on that list. And so Kevin and I met with the surveyor today and we are pursuing a survey um, so that we can do these things that we're talking about, some of these initiatives. The first thing is to survey it. We want to have it available anyway. So. We do want downtown parking. Um, mm -hmm. It's busy with all the stores and restaurants now. And, you know, in our meetings with DOT, um, you know, really shouldn't have parking around that common. They're not going to come and rip them out at next week. But um, in the long term, if we were going to limit some parking for safety, for crosswalks and that kind of stuff, it's pretty limited around there now. We, we, and we have this wonderful lot. We'd love to develop that area to have, you know, and, and then maybe look at, this was a discussion a bit a couple of years ago from the businesses along Elm Street is if if we develop that Leary lot they would kind of develop some walkways and pedestrian pathways from that to, to Elm Street so people could park and go to the businesses and some said oh I'll redesign the back of my you know building and maybe we could put some retail back there and so it could it could grow it's, it's a big long piece of land that goes all the way out you know you could even, you know, if there's property coming. I think the BBC owns it or the leader may own Leaders. a stretch there. So you could almost talk with them and do a loop, you know, out onto there. But anyways, just, just we just really want some parking um, and some pedestrian walkways, you know, to get people downtown to park and shop and go eat dinner. So, so the, far, the far end down by Leaders, um, their existing lot, their frontage is only like 88.6 uh, feet and basically it makes it a non-conforming lot. So I'm not sure whether they, and, and their lot is, is angled near the rear, so I don't know if they'd be willing to do a little bit of a land swap where we go ahead, we'd give them the triangle to go ahead and square up their lot and give us a little bit so we could have another exit mm -hmm. from the parking lot, from the Larry lot on the, the north end, or excuse me, the west end of the, the parking lot. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Again, these are all just ideas just to right. float out to see where we can go with it. Uh, you know, at the very least, you know, um, just allow us uh, a right away, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we can do some, some uh, so people can get back and forth, you know, like you said. Because otherwise, if the people don't go ahead and do any, <clears throat> um, anything between the buildings, your, your two accesses are going to be off of, uh, between by where the old subway was. Yep. And then the only other way would be to go ahead and walk through somebody else's backyard. Right. Or through that through that field. So it's just like I said, it's just some thoughts we're coming up with. Yep. Um, I would really like to know exactly where our, where our lines are, what our property is, so that way we know exactly what we're doing. Um, presently right now, the fence that's there on the north side of the property, nobody really seems to know who that belongs to. Oh, okay. Um, it could be all of the residents at that point in time back then because it's all one, one unit that everybody pitched together and do that, or is that a town fence? Right. Nobody seems to really know. So I figure at the very least, we go ahead and get some surveying done. We'll know exactly, A, it'll tell us whose fence it is. Um, two, it'll tell us exactly where we are and what we can do and what we can't do. You know, because a lot of times when you look on something on paper, then you go ahead and you look at it on land, it's, it's two different worlds. You know, works, works on paper, but it doesn't work in the real world. Right. So that's some of the things that we're really looking, looking towards to find out which direction we can go in. 
How uh, soon do with you the Leary lot, if you're going to go ahead done. and forward with that, you know, you're going to look at, like she said, the rain gardens and or something for the simple fact is, is you have to be able to take care of your drainage that's there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to end up having to go ahead and move our drainage over on the, on the Sugarloaf Street and have it go into the river, which is really what the MVP and everybody else is really that's all about, is to go ahead and try and recharge the area where you are, which is a little difficult. You know, I understand there's a lot of other places in the state, you know, mm -hmm. they got to go down 15, 20, 30 feet to hit water. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately here, we only have to go down 48 inches and hit water. So recharging, I'm kind of on the fence with it. I understand, you know, we should be doing it, um, but at the very least, we should be filtering it through whether it be the boxes or the, or the rain gardens or whatever. So the, uh, Dave's question was when on the surveying, you met today, so the Today, 10 o'clock. Yeah. So. At least a couple weeks. This here, this is what I'm talking about, and I agree with Kevin completely. What we need to do is we really need to plan these things, mm -hmm. do our homework. Mm. As Kevin's pointing out, we really need to see what we have before we start doing something exactly. with that. You know, yeah. Construction background, so right. I have a little trouble sometimes, but it's almost like, well, we're going to build a house. We don't know what style. We don't really know what we want. We're not too sure how we're going to finance it. But we've got to do something, so let's throw a foundation in there. Yeah. So no, you throw a foundation in there. You have no idea what you're building. You don't know what it's going to cost. But now you're going to try to work around that foundation you put in the ground. And it just doesn't work. You need to have that plan, and you need to have it thought out all the way through. And once you do, yep. it does take time to get there, to yep. get to that point. Yep. I understand that. It does take time, and it requires people to be a little patient. But at the same time, once you get that all established, then you can be off and running. And these things, you can click off one after another, right. and it's amazing how smoothly it will go. Yep. So. So I have agree with Kevin completely that we really need to take we a look are. at what we have. No, we and how we're going so to Kevin, have. Kevin has been pushing it. We've got the um, we've got the survey going, so we, we kind of get an idea of what we have to work with. Do we actually have a survey in the works? Or well, yeah, we met today with a, sur with a that's survey. That's what Kevin Kevin we, we wanted met, to we do. We met that. this morning at ten o'clock this morning. <laughs> Two spots that were surveyed. So he's, when, he's in the process. He's in the process right now of putting together a scope of work and or an estimate because obviously being financially responsible people that we are we're not just going out and doing it how much is this going to cost us yeah we want to see so so, we're, we're so they're in the process of putting that together and we're going to get that back what do you say probably the, right after maybe the first. the first of the year so you're talking so another week and a half the, the uh, leary lot Leary lot and and, and the um uh, new england natural bakers because we need to we need to get some there's two two folds and we'll we'll, and we'll touch on that as I Tom Deerfield is what you mean. Yes. Down Deerfield. That's Tom right. Deerfield. But a lot of people okay. recognize it, still remember it as or the pickle. The pickle, pickle shop. Well pickle we shop. wanna we have a lot of interest in that and we wanna be able to sell yeah, it. No, so fine. it's yeah. important to move it Those along. Too, too but there's areas. problem there's problems within the site itself. Mm -hmm. Because if you're coming off of no, Merrigan Way when you go along, <clears throat> um, the 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 people that bought the property on the left hand side. Um, that has a machine shop, uh, they have an easement to get onto their property. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So we need to um, it never should have been done that way. Uh, at the very least, and, and the gentleman we met with this morning came up with a really good idea, and instead of possibly going all the way down to the end to block that whole area off, um, give him 200 feet so that way he's got a conforming lot and just make it a cul-de-sac. And I said, no cul-de-sacs. Right. Um, straight shot, that's it. That's as far as we're going to go with that. Um, and then there's another another piece that we're looking at peeling off on the northern side, which would be 0.88 acres for uh, um, Burn. Burn. Yeah, um, uh, Thayer Street Associates. Um, and basically what he's looking at is he's looking at an area he's able to turn tractor trailers around. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at a traffic issue or safety issue of people backing down um, Cote Ave from South Main Street or backing out onto one of the two. Um, and, I'm, and I'm quite sure, you know, because I looked at one of the plans we were looking at briefly today, and he's got a small little area that he'd like to put up like a little storage building, strictly storage for, uh, um, for lumber. 
but that's <laughs> further down the road. But this is what he's basically looking at. So those are the two areas we were, we were trying to get them to survey. And one of the questions that I have for the board is, is on the, bear with me, my brain's a little Swiss cheese right now. Yes. Um, the west side of the property, off of South Main Street, there is a 60-foot cut. It's part of it is part of a, a drainage um, right away, but it's also part of that parcel. So 60 feet could in possibly turn into another driveway. So the question I have to the town is, do you have an appetite for whoever purchases this property to be able to put in another driveway there? I personally do. Uh, if I mean, if I, you do, that's I, great. I mean, granted, if, if somebody does put it in, if they put it in and, and I don't have to put one in, it's going to cost them probably 150000 just to get over the brook, over the brook, because of the brook being there. If we had to do it, it'd be over 200000 And I think that, you know, people that are interested in that property are, are questioning, you know, who would put it in. They, they want access to 91 and not have to go through the center of town with trucks. Right. So it's well, it's to our advantage. Goes to our advantage not to have people go through the so so it's 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 up to however you you know it, yeah. it, personally myself it would be an advantage to me for the simple fact is is the way our layout is because I don't think you know when when the whole plot was all laid out for the highway garage it was never really thought about that being a, a, a roadway per se um, if I've got a truck that I drive straight out and I leave six inches from the back of the truck to the doorway my plow is actually in, quote unquote, in their roadway. Right. So to turn that into a roadway makes it very difficult on my part. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's more of a safety issue than anything else. I mean, granted, you know, these guys pay attention. We got backup cameras all in areas, but backup cameras don't give you side to side. They only give you back. Um, usually we try and back in because that way when you drive out, it's a straight shot. You see exactly what's going on. It's more of a safety, safety factor is what we try and do. Um, but with all that being said, you know, again, that's up to the town on what they want to do. You know, mm -hmm. the cheapest, cheapest part for us would be to go ahead and just make it for a poor choice of words. We're not actually going to be a cul-de-sac, but we'll use it as the terminology. The small cul-de-sac, give him an extra, because right now the, the, it's 175 feet worth of easement right now. Take the easement, bring it to 200 feet, and then that way it just stops right there. I can push right straight forward. I don't have to worry about going all the way to the end. He has his ability to get in and out legally through his, or feasibly through his area. Um, and, there's, and there's other things that need to be cleaned up with the plan itself. For the simple fact is, is we looked at the, the deeded plan uh, that the um, surveyor came down with, and there's a bunch of older lines that are in there. That we, we, were, we were all questioning this morning, and I'm looking at it, I'm going, I'm really not sure why those dotted lines were in there. And then we started looking at some other parts, and. And one of the things that I'm concerned about is while we still own the property, we should make that a deeded easement because when we sold the property last time, right. my sewer ran through the property with no, exactly. no rights whatsoever. Yep. So um, that really concerned me, obviously. So while we own it, we want to clean up all that clean stuff. Up, clean it all up before we go ahead and get rid of it. There, I was going to say, there are other, there's more than just the, the two accesses to the property, Marion Way and Coats out of there's at least two others that I'm aware of. Because you got Jewett Ave, which is which is realistically it, it's mm -hmm. it's um, it's a right of way is what it is. It's not actually a roadway. It's a right of way. Okay. And it goes through. Um, oh God, I'm sorry, I can't think of his name, but it, it's basically oh, it's his driveway. Alice's property. Yeah, yeah, Paul's house. So. Because at that point in time, the owner Jewett. Pickle shop was two and two. One of the same. same. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yep. So, hmm. so kind of that's that's the stuff that's going on with surveying, kind of right. figuring out what to do with these two two areas. Um, so if you want to bump back up. We'll start at the top. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, operations. Sure. Yep. Um, operations right now. You know, I'm I'm still running on a short short staff. Um, last week was horrible. Um, last week, besides myself, I had two guys each day. Um, one was out sick or excuse me, one, one is out for an extended period of time. Hopefully he should be back in the next few weeks, but when he does, it's, it's going to be very limited. Um, he went out for surgery, which left one major route out. Um, and then the other, last week, we were just plagued with, with the flu. Um, it was horrible. And then up and coming 
which is one of my super one of my supervisors is out, and then my other one is going out on January seventh for surgery, and his is another four to six week um, recovery time. So operations wise, am I am I short on people? Yeah, I'm definitely short on people. Um, it just makes me have to go out and do more for the simple fact is, is we got to get it done. And the only way to get it done is, but when I do that, then there's other stuff I'm not doing, which is my normal standard job. Um, when it comes to the, like the equipment and stuff like that, um, I know there's been a real big push for the snow blower to go back onto the sidewalks right now. The, side, the, the snow blower that we're presently using right now on our track list is close to 40 years old. It was on two other pieces of equipment before it's on the equipment right now. It's old, it's broken down, it's been breaking down continuously. Chuck, being as good as Chuck is, he keeps, because a lot of the parts aren't available anymore. So he's manufacturing, or he's fabricating parts to get this thing back up and running. A new machine, or new attachment that would fit onto that machine is $28,000. I refuse to spend $28,000 right now for the simple fact is, in two more years, that piece of equipment is due for replacement. If I take the 28 grand and throw it onto that, it's as far as, again, it's a waste of money. I'm not going to replace that with the same exact piece of equipment. That piece of equipment right now is $140,000 stripped, no attachments whatsoever. For less money than that, I can get a piece of machinery with all the attachments I need. Parts are available right in Springfield. They don't have to come from Canada or, or uh, Switzerland or wherever else, or no, I'm sorry, Germany is where they've been coming out of. So there's been times we've been waiting on parts for that trackless up to a month when, again, once we go ahead and replace, I'd just soon find something that A, is cheaper, B, is, is, is just going to work better for us, and C, it's the parts. You've got to make sure we have availability to, to, to get parts for it. Um, and again, the machine itself broke down, and it was in Deerfield for the last time, not this past storm, but the storm before. He got like 98% of the sidewalks done in Old Deerfield, and then he just lost complete and total power. Um, so it took a little bit. We got the thing back up and running again. We limped it back and we fixed it. So now it's up and running again. But again, for how long, I don't know. You know, there's, there's going to be a day probably when it's running down the sidewalk and it's going to block somebody's driveway. It is what it is. Um, you know, I do, I do apologize for... That, that piece of equipment plows, right? It, it plow plows. It. Well, the, this certain particular, this, the trackless is an over the guardrail mower. So it's so it's got a it's got an attachment on the front. It's got a big arm that goes over and oh. and, and moves in closer because it's it's similar. It's similar to to the John Deere that we got through the through yeah, the mower, mower program, program, but it's different. The, the mower program is an actual rotor rotary mower. And the other one, oh man, I'm just sorry. It's all right. <laughs> um, it's it's a different style. Okay. So with that being said, it, it it's it's a good unit. But it also has uh, the snow blower. It's got the the V plow. Um, the V plow, realistically, you know, let me let me back up to the to the sidewalks itself. We all need to remember that looking at the snow policy, sidewalks are the very last thing to get done. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure all of my roadways are done. I have to make sure that the school is is ready to be opened. Um, and a lot of times, again, people need to remember when school is canceled, it's not my fault, it's not Waitley's fault, it's really nobody's fault, it's, it's Conway. And it's just inherent because of what they have up there. A lot of hills, a lot of dirt. I'll be honest with you, at one point in time before I took this, that position opened up and I looked at it and I said, no way, no thank you. It's, it's a living nightmare up there for him. You know? and, and he pulls it off, you know, Ron Sweet does a really good job mm -hmm. up there. But uh, yeah, it's, it, and that's the reason why school gets canceled 90% of the time is because of Conway. Higher elevation. It's, so it's, it's just been, the higher elevation. It's been elevation. a problem for Forever. the last, yeah. however, I, I know, from <clears throat> being on school committee 40 years ago. <clears throat> why are we closing schools? It, you know, it's great down here. It's a different world up there. Yeah. Yeah, buses, buses can't move. Yeah. And it's because it's the Union 38. So mm -hmm. it's, if they weren't, you know, if they were separated out, then it would be one thing. <clears throat> All right. Um, so that's kind of the reason what what's we've been having with, because I know a lot of people have been, been begging for the snowblower to come back. Um, you know, like I said, we, we, we think we've got it back up and running again, and we'll see how it's gonna play out the next time. Um, I guess there was, there was uh, a few complaints about the town common um, that we didn't take care of the, the sidewalks on the last snowstorm. Um, I want people to know that one of our employees brought his personal snowblower in 
to take care of that, to make sure that it was open. And again, I know there was more social media stuff um, about this past one. And you know, had they looked out at six o'clock this morning, it was already done. We are, when, when we do pull somebody out to go ahead and run the, the snow machine or, or the sidewalks, it's after he's already been plowing in a piece of equipment for at minimum six hours, because a round takes about six hours for us to complete. And then we go ahead and we throw him in, a, in, in the sidewalk machine, bouncing around. He's got nothing he can see. There's no whips, there's no this, there's no that. Do we make some damage on some people's lawns? Yes, we do. You know, and the same thing with the sides of the roads. This is, this is inherent to what it is. If we're, gonna t if, if we're gonna be doing this, this is gonna happen, and in the springtime is when we fix it. Mm -hmm. And we always have. You know, so anytime that anybody said that we've never come back and fixed it, well, that's BS is what it is because we do go and take care of everything. We'll go ahead and bring stuff in, stamp it down, and if we need to, we'll go ahead and we'll throw some we'll throw some seed at it. Um, when talking about like equipment updates and and capital plan, um, last year we 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 put a a plan together i shouldn't say too much me we i should say more of chuck um because chuck was very good at it <clears throat> we worked together we put together a plan we looked at the whole thing and we said you know what if we can get the town to level fund one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year well here let me back up three years ago the town requested a five-year mm -hmm. capital out plan for highway we gave them 32 years worth of equipment replacement. So coming on the theory, and this is how we set the plan up, over the 32 years, if you give us $115,000 a year dedicated to just highway, I will never come back and ask for any more money for equipment. Mm -hmm. There is one year at 20, 32, mm -hmm. I think it is, is there's two large trucks that are due at the same time. If we offset one truck by one year, once again, we won't come back and ask for any money. You know, so if we're really looking to be able to, to streamline and, and know what your costs are gonna be, like I said, 115 grand a year, and that's all I ask for. And I know it sounds like a lot, but right now I'm asking for 40,000 for the pickup plus, and now next year I'm gonna be asking for over 200,000. So, how can you plan ahead? How can you start budgeting if you're doing this all the time? Or if I just say 115,000 a year, straight across the board, I'll never come back and ask for any more money. So we will be, we will be presenting that again to try and see if we can go a little further with it. Um, most of the other equipment we've got, we've, it's, in, it's in good shape. The new truck that we just pulled in with the wing plow, huge difference, unbelievable. Um, it's working out really, really well for us. You know, again, we took somebody off of that route and we're able to, to um, change up the routes a little bit to try and shorten them up so that we can get things done a little bit quicker. But as soon as the one person went out, then that just threw everything right out the window and now we're back to square one where we're still at six hours around. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to, let's How many contractors are you using for snow removal? I have one guy, I have uh, one guy that takes care of Old Deerfield East Side, one guy that takes care of Old Deerfield West Side, and then I bring in four more pickups to augment the, the large trucks. Because like very specifically, like, like the truck I'm driving right now, which is, which is Mike Phillips' truck, it's a um, set plow. It's, it's a fixed plow. There's, it's not a four-way plow. So a lot of times when you're coming up at intersections, it's, it's challenging to go ahead and try and clean an intersection when your plow is continually like this all the time. Um, and that's, when the, that's where the other guys come into play, where they're able to come in and take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, also part of that route, where we're very specifically looking at, is like Hawks Road. <clears throat> Trying to take a large truck up Hawks Road, you're, you're, putting, you're putting your life in your hands, literally. Same thing with Jones Road off of Lower Road. Um, same thing with Albany Road off of Lower Road. Both of those, you try and get down in there with a big truck, I'm never coming back out again. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're augmenting um, with those. Same thing, with, again, with, with the other routes. <clears throat> Jimmy. So that way when the guys are driving down the road with the bigger trucks, they don't have to stop for the intersections. They can keep moving. You, know, you think about um, how long it takes for one person to do River Road. You know, I mean, granted, now we're only using one person instead of two. That's 10 miles long. It's 9.98 9 miles 
from one end to the other at 20 miles an hour. Um, and if you're getting an inch an hour, then it, it piles up on you pretty quick. So that's why if we keep the plows going, at least we can get the main thoroughways open and then the, the um, intersections and stuff like that, that's where the pickup comes up behind them and just kind of cleans up, so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That answer or did I like yeah. completely yeah, walk around? Good. Okay, I um, <laughs> just wanna make sure I wasn't walking around you. Any questions on those right now? And then we can move on to several other items on the list. Is there... No, so, it's just, you know, I'm finally happy to see that we're thinking about long range, not just tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Uh, capital. Yep. Um, yep. This is something that's been biting this town for a long time that nobody's been thinking ahead. Um, you know, I've been preaching it for years and years that, you know, all we had to do was follow the model that the South Chief of Fire District put together. And the town would have been a lot better off and a lot smoother. True. But, you know, we haven't done that. Well, if you, if you haven't noticed, you should notice, there's a capital uh, stabilization fund that it's we it's it's starting yes ago. yeah and it's, it's just to just this uh, so that we could you know yeah one year you grab two hundred thousand dollars the next year you've got fifty thousand right whatever the number yeah it was but I appreciate that Kevin's looking at it and saying you know on an average one hundred fifteen thousand dollars a year over the next twenty years that you know this should cover so that gives you know between capital and finance that they have a better game plan that they can look at and they know what they're facing and take some of those ups and downs out of what we've been looking for so we don't have to go to the town, you know, because, you know, obviously we have a lot of other major expenditures. Yeah, I do understand that, but a word of caution, if you do it for one department, you may be doing it for all departments. We should do it for all we departments. Should. So I'm just, I'm just saying that, so be prepared. Yeah. But we should. Well, then you'll know. Yeah. We don't. And you know exactly we where your money is going and how much yeah. you need. Yeah. Right. You know, we've already asked the chief of police to do that. And he's been working on that. I'm so. just not sure that we need five different a highway capitalization stabilization fund, a police department capital stabilization fund, and you name five more. No, we, we have no, just we can, one. We can we combine them. We need, we need one that has enough money in it so yeah. that we can do the. Right. Right. Yeah. And internally earmark because we don't yeah. want this to disappear when we need it. Yeah. Because there's um, going to be times that, you know, the plow truck's coming down Stage Road and decides to cross the road and go down through the field on oh, the other Jesus. side and we're out another plow truck for, because it's totaled. That, which has happened. It has happened. <laughs> or take signs down. Um, so, so we just don't plow Stage Road. Actually, that's what it is to hit the house. Yeah. So uh, town buildings assessment and feasibility study, do you want to give a quick update on that? Do you, where you guys are at on that. <laughs> you don't have to give a full fourth, you know, four page <laughs> Do you PowerPoint. Want to get up and give your PowerPoint? Did you know you're on the field conference? Where, you know, where, where we're at, like timing, when stuff coming back. Or I think we have something on the agenda tonight. We do. We, we, we got bids, we picked the company, we've gone back to them. They came in with a preliminary yep. um, proposal for the company to work on it. And then they came in with a preliminary proposal. We gave them some feedback on that, and they are, um, they came back with a revised proposal that met pretty much everything we asked Great. Um, with one small exception and I think we have it on the agenda for tonight to that's award correct. to, to award that company and, yeah. notice to proceed that's right and then they'll move forward and they'll study we have a contract that they've signed and you'll co-sign tonight if and then how many buildings are we what was in the scope we were doing four buildings right this building the church the senior center and the new town garage, highway garage the highway garage yep let's get on board with that okay good yep. um well, that's quick and easy. You remember um, that's so, an assessment, not a feasibility yeah. Yeah. So, study. Right. So I want to, because so right. I just Thank wanted you. to add to that. So, yeah. Add. so the, 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 yeah, I added feasibility study because in the capital um, request for this year or for 21, mm -hmm. I had put in a request on behalf of the board and, and the town buildings assessment group for a feasibility study uh, just in case there is sort of a placeholder. I know we want to get more definitive information before you, you know, put it in the budget, um, but so that we could, uh, indicate that we do plan we, we are hopeful that with the town buildings assessment being completed that will that we would be looking at maybe some type of feasibility study at that point yep. of combining you know or whatever we don't know what it is but to, to do some exploration then at that point of what the feasibility would be of whatever we determine of the buildings you know outcomes so the you next know. steps 
Um, I'm sorry, hey, Trevor, can I go back? Please, go sure. Back one? <clears throat> yeah, of course. Um, one real quick thing when we talk about part time help. Um, one thing I, I kind of bounced off here real briefly the other day was a uh, possibility of thinking about um, a part time or a three quarter time uh, custodian. Mm -hmm. And that way, that person can do multiple things. They can take care of this building, they can care, take care of basically, we're looking at about $21,000 a year right now is what we're paying for cleaning services. Right. Um, and like for here, town hall, library, the senior center, wherever those places, those different places, in the middle of a storm, if these places are open, I'm not breaking away from plowing a road to take care of the up steps. to 20,000 people a day for five people. Right. I, I just can't do it. With that being said, it doesn't get done or they have to go out and do it themselves. You know, and sometimes they can, sometimes they can't, you know, uh, very, very for the library, you know, if she's, if she's got people that can't come in, she may be the only person there and trying to do all the things that she's supposed to do and still go out and try and shovel and throw down sand, whole nine yards. That's difficult on her part, you know, and that's really not what she signed up for. Same thing here in town hall. I mean, there's nobody here in town hall. Part of their job description says, please go out and shovel snow and throw down salt. Um, again, it's just a thought, just something to, to start thinking about. I'm not trying to add more to the town as far as that, that's why we're looking at, you know, possibly like four hours a day. You do four hours a day, something like that. And as long as it's not consistent, you know, and they go over their, go over their 20 hours a week, you know, then that's when you have to start offering the benefits to all nine yards. As long as it's not consistent, you don't have to offer them the benefits. Well, I've been talking with the schools about this as well because they, you know, they're also, you know, they have custodians, but they don't have any, um, they don't have skilled carpenter, you right. know, I, I almost think of uh, somebody yeah, that yeah. could, you know, fix some stuff, you know, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't be, you know, um, you know, obviously we'd go out for a general contract or a bid to do something, but for the general maintenance of our buildings, you know, that's our, our biggest asset we own in town and a lot of things just get left undone. And I always, I thought about sharing between I mean, we own the school anyways, mm -hmm. but um, between that, Frontier's in the same same boat. They they also don't have skilled, um, you know, repair people right. to do. They're always going out for a sub or something like that. And maybe it is. Maybe we just subcontract out to somebody or get, whether it's a subcontract out or we have somebody part-time or something like that. We need somebody to be able to, you know, all right, the heat's not working in the bathroom at the senior center. Can you take a look at that for the third time? And right. uh, we got to change the fan or we got to do a light change in some room or some, something more than, um, you know, more than a custodian, but less than a, you know, mm -hmm. highway superintendent, right. you know, to right. come over and do this stuff. I just, so. I just want to say for the record, though, that sounds fantastic, <laughs> but do I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want what Kevin is saying and what we're facing, like in the immediate, uh, like he's saying it because we're facing it like today and yesterday and the day before I know, for um, of, of what we're trying to accomplish. I had mentioned this at a previous meeting of the select board that, you know, you have a senior center that you have custodial. As Kevin said, we're paying tw about twenty something thousand a year for uh, custodial. It covers the senior center. That's for one day a week. Right. It's not adequate for serving meals three days a week with a kitchen with sometimes 20, you know, at the least amount, maybe 10 or 20 people. Sometimes there can be up to 60 people at events that they're having. And if they just got the cleaning done and then they have an event, their place is wrecked for like a week. So this is where people go every day and want to spend their time. It's like they're home away from home. So it shouldn't be in a state of, you know, uncleanliness. It's not affect you know it's not it's not correct <laughs> so that's something we need to um they have only one day a week they're budgeting there's already you know we we want to talk a little bit about the senior center budget but there's you know we know that we need to look at operations there and see what we can sustain i guess but this is an issue that's been mm -hmm. raised and then the it goes along with the maintaining of the outside of the building which we again can't it's we can't expect if we're going to open these buildings we so we're having a lot of discussion about opening <laughs> or not opening the pressure
pressure to try to stay open for patrons and the safety of employees and balancing all of that. And we just can't have employees, you know, cleaning up buildings themselves either. So, you know, we have to address the, and if you, you know, we're expecting Kevin to take on, you want him to now take on the senior center in terms mm -hmm. of doing that. So right. you're asking now, we're, he's, we're hearing he's pretty much already reached right. his capacity. He's got people out, more mm -hmm. people out. And now he's in the next like days supposed to be taking on <clears throat> another building maintenance. Mm -hmm. It just, it's a lot. So we yep. just need to figure it out. I'd like to just add something here because we've discussed several items tonight and <laughs> as far as the capital improvement committee as far as the plan mm -hmm. and the five-year plan uh, once again with all these unknowns it puts the committee in a very difficult position and we're limited as far as time with our new bylaw language uh, which I believe we need to have supposedly a plan uh, middle of February. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a very difficult task to accomplish. We can deal, as far as a committee, we can deal with immediate FY21 requests, but what I'm concerned about, and I think the other committee members may be concerned about, is how do we deal with the next four years going forward beyond that budget year of 21 with all the unknown factors and all the variables. And in the past, we've tried, as a committee, we've tried to anticipate and we put in placeholders, mm -hmm. but that placeholder system almost got us in trouble just recently mm -hmm. here with a bonding company for the right. sewer. Yep. Because of the way the time played out and the final amount that was required wasn't in time right. or the timeline which would allow us to act on it so we had to the, we had to vote the, the board right, had to right. amend it at town meeting yep. but yet at the same time the bonding agency was looking for more information as far as the capital improvement committee right. which didn't happen because of the time element right what i'm concerned about is once again with all these variables in that i mean we can do the committee can do a draft and take care of the 21 budget items, but beyond that, some of them we do know the numbers and we can plug in there, but others, there's a lot of variables involved and, and the numbers aren't predictable. And I so see. all of a sudden now we're back to kind of guessing yep. and trying to use placeholders. And I don't think that's the best situation for the town. It's the best the committee can do with the information that we have, but I don't know if really long term it's it's the best situation for the town. So my my um, my take on that is, it's okay if the number's not right in the in the two and three and four or five year out. Right. Um, it, it's a you know we need thirty thousand for this, sixty for that. We're not really sure. I know you your committee and you have take great pride in like putting together. Exact. So the residents know, okay, this is how much is going to cost, this is when it's going to happen. And that has been great for the initial years, but, you know, um, there's been a hesitant to go, we're going to spend $19 million on our sewer and vote that thing and put it on that board. And that's kind of what stuck us on that bond thing. So right. um, I don't think it's a, this just personally, I don't think it's a problem to, you know, guess at those numbers far out and go, okay, we're going to do a senior center for, uh, or a library for eight million. Stick it on the plan in four or five years from now, and if it adjusts and moves, that's okay. Or we're going to need ten million dollars for a new town hall. Put that out, you know, with some discussion. Obviously, it's right. just spitball, but just it doesn't have to be exact. I don't right. think. I think it's okay. But the initial year coming up, you guys do a fantastic job of getting that, you know, pretty accurate, so people know what they're spending. But um, I, maybe that's just my take. But. I don't know, does anybody else want to weigh well, in I just, on that? I just want to make sure everybody's aware of it. Mm -hmm. That it's you know, going to be everybody fluctuating. Everybody here and also the residents, mm -hmm. that there are going to be times where that five-year plan, an example, we have uh, $8 million in there for the library for 21. Well, yep. that's not going to, I mean, for Correct. 20. 
Yep. So that's not going to happen, or 21, excuse me, FY21. Yep. So that we're going to have to push that back now. Yep. And it might not be the $8 million now. It might be $7 million we just heard tonight. Yep. So it's, I just want the residents of the town to realize that yep. the committee is dealing with a lot of variables. Absolutely. And some unknowns. And as a committee, we are trying to put together a plan the best we can yep. with... And now we try. As much as we can anticipate. Yep. But and it may yeah. not be perfect. It can't be. As far as, yep. you know, the FY21 will be on the money. Yep. But the rest of it, we may have to adjust along the way. Absolutely. And as long as everybody understands that, yep. then I think the committee's okay with it. Yeah. But but I can't speak for the whole committee. Understood. Just, yeah, I just think the more be, you have on that. And we'll need to discuss that further. And further as out. A committee. Yep, I agree. Okay. I just think planning this stuff Jeff, further Jeff, given the best estimate we have at the time is what's important, I think. Because mm -hmm. you need to be flexible in the sense that we get more information or more grants right. or whatever. As long as we're trying to do the best estimate at the time, I think is, is really what we're trying to do. We're trying to capture what information there is. The best we can. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Time, yes. Whether we you're move forward gonna, with these things or not. You're not going to know in many cases, in most cases, what well, your actual commitment is until you put a shovel in the ground. Correct. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, and, you and, you're trying, and you're trying to offset as much as possible with grants. And so you don't really know what the opportunities are until that year or when you're re ready to go to and do it's, something. It's also a matter of priorities. I mean, we have yeah. a situation mm -hmm. where we have competing interests. Yep. You can name four or five uh, significant projects that are that we all think someplace along the way we need to have, but somewhere along the way we need to say one of this is priority one, this is priority two, uh, yep. and this is how we're going to pay for priority one. But, right, right. but yes, things exactly. change because right. if we don't get the MVP grant for Kelleher Drive, we still have to, I mean we've got the engineering part done, Right. but we no, don't have the implementation saying. done, and it's not going to last another year, I do not believe. So mm -hmm. if we miss out on the grant, that's going to impact the capital you know, plan. Right. Yes, it will. So that, that mm -hmm. I mean, stuff like that happens. That happens. That's okay. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the important part is having, having the list of things that you know yes, you correct. need to worry about, mm -hmm. and yeah. then they can adjust both in time and in amounts, but mm -hmm. keeping that list up is, I think, is it's very important. important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Joe. You know, I can remember when I first started getting involved with town politics, Peter James said to me, he says, being in town politics is like herding cats. It is. You're never quite sure which direction they're going to go. And they very seldom go in the same direction. And the only thing we can be rest assured, if they're on a table, they're going to sweep it off it. <laughs> so, you know, that's the unfortunate part. And I think a lot of people in town realize that. Um, and, you know, we don't, a lot of people don't hold the committees that accountable for every little penny that we're talking about. You know, there are a few people that will complain about it, but, you know, no matter what we do, there will always be somebody that will complain. Mm -hmm. But it's just, you know, it's just trying to do the best we can mm -hmm. with what we've got. I think people know that we try the best. Eighty percent know that we're trying hard. Yeah. Mostly. Thank you. Yeah, he's really going to move this along. So, um, so uh, we may. No. <laughs> we'll catch you out soon. We're almost done. Um, so, yes, culverts, culverts, culverts. Yeah. So, this is so, an area. Yeah, that so we, just a nod to the fact that we have a lot of culverts to do. We have, an, as Carolyn has alluded to many times, we have an inventory for half the town that's quite extensive. We have grants in the works to apply, and we have design work being done. So, whether we are awarded grants, we are going to need to do culvert work. So, as uh, we put in a, a request for culverts for a million dollars for the next, you know, 10 years, like 100,000 a year, again, with your an, an, an ode to just get it on the plan and we'll see where we land, but yeah. we do want to say that we have a need for funding them. Just recognizing for some. that. Yeah, Speaking of which, it. Chuck had uh, called me and he had, had talked with Ryan Clary and I, it's mm -hmm. not on the... Yeah. Yeah, I have um, I have the email from Ryan though about what to do with okay. the DLTA. Yeah, we need to send the letter to make sure that we um, have the possibility of getting some technical assistance for him to do the inventory, 
and then we could follow up with mm -hmm. Zach because I was going to have Zach from Tie and Bond do an inventory plus maybe some preliminary mm -hmm. um, prioritization. So if we can have the inventory done under technical assistance through the FERCOG for the rest of the town, because we had DOT do the um, under the Resilient Communities Group um, project when they were doing um, you know the work, the damage from 2011, they did the along the Deerfield River um, structure. So if we can do the rest of the town Would be nice. under technical assistance and still put in for that grant this summer for uh, it's about 50 or 60 thousand mm -hmm. to do the rest of the town prioritizing, that would really narrow down that the how number, much money, how much we need per year. Yeah, because a lot of some of them are small and and Kevin and his his department can do. Um, but then some of them are like Kelleher Drive that you know we weren't aware of until that class went out and saw how bad it was. And that's a huge, you know, that's too big for us to do. That has to be um, contracted out. So that was really just to talk and make people aware we have a lot of covert work to do. Um, just hitting on the transfer station and composting and recycling and solar, you know, recycling, we need to think about, I don't know if everyone read the paper today, this has been a uh, big issue Jan Amin's working on and um, Kevin went to a seminar the other day, a workshop on that. We used to get a lot of money for recycling, or quite a bit, you know, so much a ton. Um, we now have to, are probably gonna have to pay money, quite a bit of money per ton. So uh, just looking at Deerfield alone, it's about 28,000 bucks. Yep. Um, depending on if we, uh, Without, we used to get paid for that. Now, not, not to include glass. Not to include glass. Glass is going to be another 14000 on top of it. Uh, but, I read that backwards. But so if, I you, thought but it was if you go ahead, 21. well, it'll be twenty one for that, but you still got to pay for the glass someplace. Right. So there's another 14000 in glass. So that's still what, what I wasn't clear on, and maybe some pointers on that, is we used to get paid for our recycling because we have a two stream. We separate out our cardboard and paper, and we do our... All of our glass and plastic and stuff and mm -hmm. the other, and some towns just dump it all in one thing. We to have include to trash too. That, include that trash. trash is that's, that's what they really call expensive. Stream. So we do a very good job. We we if you look at the chart of other towns, we recycle a lot, and uh, we are getting paid and helping the transfer station break even. But now with you know China not taking recyclables and um, a new contract coming up, it, it's going to be expensive for us. Um, so we got to figure out what to do with that. But that's that's one part of that. Which kind of touch on that also, as you have that contract is, is on your agenda tonight to go ahead and sign. Yeah. Um, now, what this is basically for, or it should be on there. Oh, it should be. Is, this is it the shed or the? No. Oh, it's no. the other thing. Yes. No, yes. no this, this, is the, this is the actual contract for recycling. Oh, yeah. You're recycling now, the RDP. Yeah. She, I, I've been back and forth on the phone with her it. today. She said. Just now wait. she's saying don't sign it? No, because there's some problems with the um, um, the language. There's Please. nothing that says that there's in the contract. We can have our lawyers look at it, which right. will cost us money. So I was just going to table it because there's no um, reference to um, subject to appropriation at town meeting Do in the have? contract. Right, and plus, so and, and, and decide, there, there are there are some problems with this. So basically, what this is what this is what she said the other day is to go ahead and sign it. Do not send it to DEP. No, I know. Sign it, bring it to her, let her hold on to it. So that way, if push comes to shove, because after a certain date, and I can't remember exactly the what the date is, January, you know what? January 30th. <laughs> January 30th. Then, then if you don't make those For decisions us. by then, then we have to try and figure out what we're going to do with our recycling because on we're not going to be able to get rid of it. Right. So. I so it, if, if you've been in touch with her and you guys got it all figured out, then yeah, no, she sent. I good think to go. she sent an email this afternoon too to you as well, and she said that we should have it looked at by town council. So what she was saying right. is, yeah, yeah, but I, I would just instead of spending our money to have our council look at it, it we would just table it for another week or two and see what okay. is what is being sorted out. Okay, because it's everybody in the in the county is signing it. So why towns. have every lawyer for every town look at it. Oh, yeah, it's all right. the same issue. It's whether you appropriate the money at town meeting. Okay. So if we get that fixed, then we just get it fixed for everybody. It's not. We did get the approval at town meeting, meeting yes. right? To, yes. to sign a contract. Yes, we have the ability to sign it. But she was just going to hang on to it so that so we, we can as, meet again as a gather. A little bit. Right, because okay. when I had my MAPCO meeting on Monday, we were talking with like Williamsburg and Shrewsbury, and we were just going to give it to Janamine to hold on to. 
Okay. And then she was going to try to get them down a couple bucks yep. a time. But we just need to stick together. So okay. whether we sign it now or table it, doesn't matter. I just don't want it to go outside our office until mm -hmm. we know what we're going to do. Okay. That's all. Uh, we can come in and sign. Um, and and composting. Down. Composting seems to be working really well. We yep. originally started with a two-yard dumpster. We had to go to a four-yard dumpster. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of the season, because it's cold, hold on yards. It seems like it's dropped off dramatically. Less pizza. Or I could probably go ahead and go back to a two-yard dumpster again. Um, but every time I start moving back and forth like that, that's costing us money, like extra money on top of it. So just soon stay with the four at this yeah. point in time, and then we'll continue to see how things roll out. Well, it's the holidays, so there might be a lot. No, of no, months. we're talking months. Yeah, oh, so really? please. We're talking the past two months, two really? and a half months. Yeah. So it could be huh. weather. Because James, James up there, he keeps track. He does. He's, he's doing a fantastic. He's telling how many people come in, how many people drop off recyclables, yeah. this and that. So he's doing a very good job. Um, very happy. With just that. as I hit back he's to that recycle recycle. real quick. So when, it, when people recycle, this is for everybody <clears> in town, when you come up there, um, if you have tin cans, you know, since it's costing us a lot of money and you can get nickel for them, just drop them in a separate those for, you know, because we got to pay to get rid of that stuff. Now, if you can separate it and people can, are uh, well, just, charitable, just, can do, you know, can, can do that. We're working on that. But separate them, turn them in yourself or, or find another way. <laughs> just so you're aware, that's a breach of contract and that right there. Um, what is? That people recycle their stuff? Yeah, if it goes into the transfer station? Understood. Okay, all right. Yes, just, not just, take just, it out of the transfer no, station. No, no, no. What I'm saying is... Before you get there. Okay, all right. Because otherwise... <laughs> Do but, not go up to the transfer station and get cans, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but that Don't also it before you go. For yourself, not that for also us. will, will affect our tonnage. Correct. And when you affect your tonnage, then it's going to take, if we're less than 17,000 tons collectively, then our rate of 9350 is going to go to over 100. We have plenty of tonnage. So, I think. Yeah. so just, just so you're aware. I'm aware. But so, just, if you can get a nickel for them now, yeah, get no. the nickel before you bring it and we have to pay exactly. for it. That's what I'm saying. So, exactly. Okay. I agree. Um, and so the last thing was just oh, solar. <laughs> yes, yeah. last item is solar. Yeah, so Real we quick. have the um, um, we have a contract that has been reviewed by council and has gone back to Nextamp. Right now, it's been redlined, and uh, we have a consultant, Beth Greenblatt, that has been working with us too. But it's now back Great. at Nextamp and being reviewed by them. So we're close. So um, we're going moving on that. We're moving on it. Yep, Yay. moving on that. What do you Getting mean it's redlined? Done. Um, the lines. agreement, it was like negotiated and then it went to their council and then to our council and now it's back to their council. Oh, the, okay. the agreements that we're going to sign eventually for them to do the interconnection. I'm used to seeing red lines and it means they were screwed. <laughs> oh, did no, I see? no. <laughs> just crossing this out with a red No, thing. yeah, yeah. Just, they're just going through the different um, versions. Just, I'll hit quickly on the wastewater treatment updates. We are uh, moving forward. We, we're going to sign tonight the... Um, hopefully to award the grant to Waterline Industries this for our first phase, which is fixing the, sec the secondary clarifier, I should say primary clarifier, the only one we have. Um, we have upgraded the original ones that came in the 70s to kind of deal with that bypass. Um, that made the bid that we went out the first time was a lot of money for them to take on that, that responsibility. We've separated that, brought that in-house. I think we'll be in good shape there, um, and this will all come in, you know, right about at our budget and still have some room for contingency. So that, that's good. We're, um, we're working on design, so that's just getting started for the major project um, at the plant. So I'll get some updates on that. We're gonna have a meeting, I think, on the 10th. Um, and uh, Julie's, um, we've invited Julie to join that task group that we're all working on to try and keep, keep that stuff rolling. And um, what, what time is that on the 10th? We haven't said it yet. Oh, it was okay. going to be the 9th or the 10th, but we'd love it to be the 10th. So I just got to get back to David. Okay. He's going he's to work on that. Right. So, and I'll right. post it. So if, you, if any, anybody wants to go, yeah. we'll go I, and do that. We um, should make sure. And let's see. Uh, you know, still, and then in, we still need to think about the other half of town that, that we're working on. So we need to figure out a, a plan of attack up there as well. And so we've got some things in the works to try and figure that out. So. Uh, more updates on that later. So, Trevor, in, in 21, we will have some temporary bonding, but we are not expecting any additional costs in 21 for any additional... No. The only cost will be the design work. Um, so we have, you know, quite a bit of money to pay out for design in 2021. 20, You're talking about what we're already doing, though, the work we're already doing. You're not talking about additional... No, for the for the 11.3 11, 11. Oh, yeah, yeah. Project. No, no, yeah. I got... Yeah. 
Yeah. So we have the other That's stuff, funded. which is the design is done on, and then yeah. and. Uh, no, you're not asking for any additional funding now. No. Basically. Quick no. question: Has anybody from the board approached the private schools? Yes. We're working. On as far as the sewer and yes. had some discussions. Yes. Okay. We're, 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 we're working, working on, on that. Trying to figure out right, great. You know, what we can have for help. Yep. And Sounds I think they're good. interested in helping. It's a big liability for them too. So sure. I think oh, they yeah. want to. They want to help. No, as long yes. as there's some discussion, yep, I there think is. that's great. Yep. If I can, when you're talking about the schools and the wastewater treatment plant, I'd like to see, I'm going to reach out um, to the three schools and see if I can get them to start educating um, the kids a little bit more about what you can and can't put down the toilet. Yep. Um, simple fact is, is usually you can teach the kids, the kids will teach the parents. Um, and very specifically for, for the, the boarders that are there, I mean, it's, they're killing us. I know, but it's not just them. It's not just it's not just old Deerfield. It's, it's everywhere. not just the nonprofits. It's not just the schools. It's everywhere. It's it's. Do we have more in South Deerfield? Yeah, we have more, but it's just because we're more, more of a people. collection over here. And the bottom line is, is here's my public announcement. If it doesn't come out of your body and it's not toilet paper, it does not belong in there. It's costing yeah. us money. The last backup so far right now. Oh yeah. I'm up over fifteen thousand dollars worth of cleanup. And we're not done yet. Right. With two houses. Two it's houses. It's just rags. Rags. Grease. Stop you, putting it in the system. I'll get please. texted pictures on a regular basis of what that aeration tank looks like. Yeah. And it'll go from fairly clear at about nine in the morning to completely covered. Mm -hmm. Six inches of fat, oil, and grease by one thirty. It's brutal um people really have to not flush grease down the sink or the no dental know, floss no dental floss no flushables all, i don't want to go they through all the disgusting flushable. stuff that goes grease. down the toilet but it's a is that coming from houses or is that coming from commercial we don't believe it's coming from commercial simple fact is we've been continually going out and looking at everybody's grease trap to make sure it's it's clean it's compliant it's working properly um there you know and it and Right. Grease, it doesn't take a whole lot of grease in water to, mm -hmm. to make it up. Yeah. You know, like personally myself, I, I cook something, I put it in a glass jar, I throw it in the freezer. Yeah. As soon as it's as soon as it's full, I throw it out, it's solid waste. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And and to get a little more anal with my personally myself, and, and it sounds stupid, but after I pour mm -hmm. out whatever's left over, I take a paper towel, I wipe it out and I throw it in the trash. Right. Because if you take if, if you've got a hundred people that just wash that little bit. Well, that little bit turns into a lot of bit when you're talking to the collection yeah. system, when you're talking and to many people. And it's kind of weather, there. it freezes, and it's, and it's, and it's, it's killing us. Up. I mean, there's, 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 it looks like, like a Play-Doh machine trying to push something out, and it's this big around, and all it is is big white grease. It's and disgusting. And the thing and is, it's fat birds. It's costing fat birds. Yeah, fat birds. This is what it's costs industry. makes the system it's so costing expensive. It's thousands <laughs> and thousands of dollars a year know. because you're putting stuff in that doesn't belong there. I mean, like, would you continually sit there and hit yourself in the head with a two by four all day long? Well, you're, so you're hitting your wallet when you're doing it. Feels like it. So what's the difference? Side. Sorry, I hate to be a little graphic, but. Okay. <laughs> so. If you have a septic system, you take care of your septic system. Yeah, exactly. You have to replace I mean, if everybody it, treated the sewer system like people treat their own septic, septic systems, system? no. we'd so be in good shape. The last uh, couple items um, and oh, yeah. were uh, the we'll South County up. Senior Center, exploration and service expansion, and building feasibility. Um, Christina is here. She's our, our South County Senior Center director. Um, we also had planning on here as a topic too. And again, we don't have to hit everything tonight. I mean, if people are tired, it's you know before the holidays. But I really would like to get a, one or two people from each board together to start hammering out those priorities and uh, bring it back to to the full boards and talk about you know what we, what we need to do and what our priorities are and what we can afford to do. Um, so, because on, on this last thing was planning the strategic you know, master plan, open space, economic development. These are all things we talk about on a daily basis, but it's really hard to kind of put it into a 15 minute presentation real quick here. Um, but we're looking at all of that. We're looking to develop our, our properties and we, you know, we want to think larger, you know, what do we need for recreational fields for our kids? What do we want to, you know, we just want to look out, you know, and look back 20 or 30 years and know that we've been planning and that we, we did things right for the town. So. Um, I would like to get a group together, anybody that wants to 
drop you drop me an email or a name or tell Diana and we'll get we'll get a little uh, group together to start working on that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we have Christina come up? For yeah, a Christina, you want to come up for a second, just sure. <clears throat> and then thank anybody you. needs to Kevin, blast thank out. You. I understand, you know. We'll get some yeah. 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 Good. <laughs> We're good. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Right. Good. Thanks for. So Christa, Christina's kind of coming on the fly. She, yeah. We just, we just yeah, kind we of talked about her budget this afternoon, so we don't want to take a deep dive. But there has been a lot of discussion about the senior center and about the, you know, the building. And, mm -hmm. yes. um, you know, since Christina's come on board, we've, we have done a little bit of a service expansion over there. And so as we come to talk about this year's budget, we just wanted to, you know, again, touch on these things. and. Mm -hmm. um, I let Christina talk about the, the Tri-Town group that's talking about the building and stuff. If you wanna. Uh, first of all, I just want to mention we had our Christmas party today, so that's oh, why nice. I'm kind of a goofy uh, <laughs> 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 I told her, I'm like, I can't talk today. I put this <laughs> sweater on. <laughs> I love Very it. Very joyful. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, um, like she said, we were talking about the budget earlier and um, the, the request at least is going to be in that it, it's it's higher again it's expanded and that's really um, to go towards um, I mean that's not obviously even touching the building because we're right. far from that um, but it's expanding you know it, it, it's covering that um, we're, well we're officially open in what we say on literature and stuff Monday Wednesday Friday um, I'm there five days a week, and Tuesday, Thursday, um, we are increasingly having more classes happening, more people are coming by for services, or to even just use the space to read the paper and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so some of this budget increases to, is to cover um, that expansion that's already organically happened um, because I'm there. Um, mm -hmm. and then we, and then of course we have our, our, um, ongoing transportation issue, which, <laughs> which we have none, which we have, right. That we have none. There's the issue. <laughs> so, um, so we do need to, you know, really look at that and, uh, that's in one way or another going to involve, uh, something in the budget, you know, whether that's getting a van or, or contracting with someone or, um, you know, renting a mm -hmm. bus to go, you know, at this point we can't um, go on any kind of trips. Um, and then, of course, the other end of the transportation issue is getting, enabling people to come to our center that, mm -hmm. you know, don't drive. And, and uh, it's not an exaggeration to say I, I get at least a couple calls a week from, you know, whether, whether it's a family member of that mm -hmm. person or whoever it is about, well, well, how can you come and get mom? Can you, the, yeah. you know, and no, I'm sorry. <laughs> so. Right. We can't drive people in, in our private vehicles right. and that kind right. of thing. And, and the other issue is the RTAs, the regional transportation authorities, you know, one town uses one PVTA and the other one uses, <clears throat> the other two use FRTA. So it's really hard um, and they won't allow kind of right. both groups to be combined and travel somewhere. So right. it's very difficult. Um, we're trying to work with our legislators to try and figure out a solution there. But you know, a lot of community centers, um, they, ha they have a van or they have a driver. They've contracted with somebody to be able to take them to certain places or to be able to pick up people. You know, we, we do a lot for uh, our children in this community and a lot of the seniors have done a ton for, uh, for our schools. Every year they step up and support them to a tune of 70% of the budget every year. So, um, you know, we do need to look, you know, with our, with our aging population, exactly. there's, a huge, um, there's a huge need. You know, there's a lot of different needs and a lot of, um, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of the people that would be there um, maybe taking care of mom and dad are, are, are needing to work. So there's not, there's two people out working, nobody's getting the mom to take care of her or dad and just, it's, it's difficult. We need to be there for them and, and, and start supporting our seniors how they've supported us uh, for all the years. So um, we'll just have to look and see what that looks like, you know, right. monetarily and what we can afford, what we need and wants. You know, when we look at some of these other projects in town, we have to ask ourselves, is, is it, you know, taking care of our seniors and bringing <clears throat> them places and, and addressing their needs more important than another capital project or a another truck or another this or that. It's important to weigh those things out. It's, 
you know, it's difficult because it's people. It's not a, you know, a wing plow truck. You know, it, it's, it's a different kind of a thing, but it's, it's very important to these families that they have right. support, so. Yeah. So yeah, just in, you know, general, um, just kind of putting that out there that this is why, you know, the last couple budget years, the, the budget has increased. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, the, the goal is always to have a kind of level, but this is, this is, this is just trying to get, really to catch up to where we should, we should be in the mm -hmm. services that we already should be providing. And, mm -hmm. um, and again, I won't even get into the building because that's a whole <laughs> other issue, but. Um, it's a big issue. But I, yeah, but, I, a <laughs> yeah, but I do want to mention that, so we have a, a three town, each town yes. has now re uh, instituted the Council on Aging group. And so including Deerfield, but Waitley and Sunderland as well. And so those groups have come together in a tri-town effort to talk about the building basically. So they're looking yes. at doing a survey, um, a need survey, and then waiting and, you know, waiting for the results of the assessment and then um, you know, talking about different, visiting other uh, senior centers that have been built and, and just talking with other groups about their experiences and stuff. So they're just kind of exploring the, the building feasibility. Right. So we do have progress, which is nice to Good. see. There is some forward uh, <laughs> movement, but yep. obviously recognizing it's a, it's a long term. Uh <laughs> yeah, it is. Christina, so I just you. want to thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I think does transportation has to be the priority? Yes. And uh, so yes. we'll try to keep an eye out for whatever opportunities can come along, like with um, grants and stuff. Right. I mean, we're one of the few senior centers yes. that doesn't have transportation. Very few, yes. I know. So we'll have to figure something out. Well, thank you for all you do for our seniors I know. every day. Thank you. I really appreciate it. We, an amazing I, job. we, yes, I really appreciate it too. Thank you for um, listening. <laughs> thank you, Christina. We're not going to dig into strategic master open plan. No, no, I just, I just, just want to touch quickly. Yeah, Go well, you Shoot. mentioned, I, I put strategic on there because you had mentioned, and you've said it a couple times, you'd like to have kind of a small working group come out of this to, I think, do a little more like yes. strategic planning, right. it sounds like. I, I just wanted to mention the master and the open space planning, just in terms of your master plan is, was conceived in 2000 or adopted in 2000, so it's 20 years old. Generally, every 20 years, you want to do your master plan, and your master plan is really a land use plan it, it, it really informs your zoning but you have had some challenges in your zoning in the last couple years in terms of you know your zoning board has given two zoning use variances meaning you've exempted your own zoning to put something there that you didn't say could go there and you've you know you've um, you're in litigation with Dollar General over that so mm -hmm. I think it's worth looking at zoning and, and master plan and what you want your community to look like you know, in a long-term way and, and inform that with zoning. And then with the open space plan, we've been talking about acquiring ball fields and there's money that you can apply for every year that I think the town should pursue for mm -hmm. land um, ball field acquisition and development of ball fields and land um, for ball fields and passive and active recreation. Um, but you have to have an uh, approved open space plan on file with DCR. No, and, and well, yours actually is good until September of 21. So mm -hmm. you're in good shape. Mm -hmm. But just something to keep on the radar day. that if you don't, if you want to start planning for that to be able to, so we can apply for a grant next July, which I would mm -hmm. love to, to do. Um, but in the following year, or we should be talking about, updating. you know, updating the plan. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then economic development, uh, we are working towards some economic development initiatives. Um, we, uh, the, the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce, Diana Zainel, has put together a list of Deerfield businesses, and after the first of the year, we'd like to start to kind of get together some, some business groups to talk about our complete streets effort mm -hmm. and talk about um, the down, you know, the De South Deerfield, some of the initiatives down there, and also just to see what kind of things that we can do to support those businesses in town. Mm -hmm. And then we're, of course, trying to market property and turn over things, you know, like yep. that as well. And um, when, you're t when you're putting together your capital plan, it's really a funding plan, as you know. And one of the ways you can fund it is through sale of real estate and things mm -hmm. like that. So Barb and I have been talking about, you know, looking over the town-owned real estate list. You know, periodically you should do that for tax title properties mm -hmm. and just general real estate to make sure anything that you no longer need, you can get back on the tax rolls right. and you can generate money. You can use we that for capital. That. We, we did yep. a little while yeah, ago. We, yep. we should yeah. we'll continue, continue that for yeah. sure. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's all. That was pretty much it, Trevor, for those. Great. Thank you. Um, 
Anything else anybody wants to add? Or yeah, can, go ahead. Can can I? You can do whatever you'd like. Yeah, good. <laughs> I just never tell Skip that. Yeah, no, I, I just need to bring this question first. Sure. Right. Is this capital related? Right. Well, yes, no. He may want to yes, skip out. I was Our, uh, thinking we might want to adjourn the capital. <laughs> you may. I'd make a motion to adjourn. Got <laughs> <laughs> somewhere to be. Yeah. Well, no one stick around. To I've got places to be. I, I have a son home. You know, take so. take two minutes. Okay. Uh, basically. You know, it's the same speech that I sort of give every year, and that is uh, state law, Proposition 2 and a half, to a large extent, uh, limits our ability to increase funding from one year to the next year. So, you know, when we, we do sit and we talk about the needs and the wants, uh, and we don't do a very good job at prioritizing things. Uh, so whether it's, uh, I don't care, I'm not gonna put any names on things, but when people come in and say, you know, we really need to have X, Y, Z, uh, then it, it becomes really in many cases your responsibility to say, well, yeah, we do need X, Y, Z. And that means that ABC over here that we've been funding for the past five years or 10 years may need to be cut back. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is more of a priority than that. I think you need to say really that it's only a couple hundred thousand that we work with from one year to the next mm -hmm. as an increase. I don't think people realize well, what a small... Well, 2.5% of a $15 million budget. Mm -hmm. So you're really looking at two, now, three, or 400,000. But no, no, when Skip, you, when you that, take don't a look forget that that includes... All the stuff that goes into that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, don't forget that state aid. Well, but I'm, keeps I'm talking about you're not going to hold everybody's salary like this and say, no one's getting a raise for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. I know. And we're going to take that money you know and we're going to do this with it. Right. Well, that's what I was hoping in that group, if we can get together, you know, one person from each board and we could sit down and just, you know, it could be on a Saturday morning or Friday night or whatever, whatever works for people, but figure that priority out and say, okay, with the money that we have coming in, what are the, is there, what can we do? You know, where are the most priority um, items that we can start knocking off the list? And we know we have to do stuff, and we just got to figure out how. So I'm anxious to kind of get together and start planning that stuff with you guys. So. I mean, the other one that I do get a little concerned about, is, and not that we're doing it, but uh, if we were able to get a grant that allowed us to build something, yeah. and then we build it, and then all of a sudden it becomes apparent that we need to add staff to maintain it. Right. It's like, oh, we didn't think of that. It's all got to be grouped in. Yeah. So. Well, we just have to even, even plain, plain old maintenance. Nobody calculates for maintenance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no. Motion to adjourn the capital. Ken, <laughs> Ken made a motion to adjourn the capital improvement committee. I, I will second that. Carol and second it. All in favor for capital? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Ken, thank you, you coming if, for so we had a forum. Thank you so are much. Are you guys we, close, closing up shop more, or just a regular? We still have more. Okay, so we can. You guys so the finance, finance committee can. Uh, Hang on if you So I'll accept a motion to. Uh, thank you, Ken. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Madam. Thank you guys so much for coming. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Yes, thank you, Ken. Happy holidays, too. Get a name to me or to yes. Diana. Dick, one one from each board, and unless you want two on each board, please come and, you know, let's Put your get names this stuff in the hat. We need to. So. Put somebody else's forward. name. Put someone Go else's in. name in the hat. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have one of Folks, my name is Dick Evans. I'm local counsel for Harvestville. Uh, company that's taking over the Pioneer Gardens uh, for marijuana cultivation. Uh, we just had an event at Deerfield Inn, and I've got some representatives of the company. And I just wanted to introduce them to some of the town leadership here. Okay. This is, I put a face on the name of this uh, faceless corporation. This is Mark Ross, director of the community outreach. Good to see you again. Uh, Ali Kirkpatrick is governmental relations. Dr. William Trout, yes, the no, medical, right, okay. medical director who the select board has had before. Yep. And Martin Coronado, hey, Martin. who is the local uh, GM. 
uh, the facility. This is the capital um, uh, planning committee and the select board. And finance. these are the finance. 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 If anybody has any questions of their proposals, what they plan to do there, this is a good chance to, to, to ask them. How was Thank your you. event, Dick? Was it it was very nice. nice. Thank you. We had a very, very we had a tea nice party. This wonderful, our, yeah. wonderful <laughs> reception at the Senior Center today. The 420? Yes. Oh, that's right. I heard that was, yeah. was going to happen the at party. the Senior Party. The 420. To celebrate the tea party. It was good. Yes, it was. We were hoping to that's a good joke. Everyone always wants samples. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Dick, so much. It was nice to see you. Welcome to Deerfield. Thank you. Very close to the Yes, we did. We did get an answer on that, right? What? Your licenses? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, we have our licenses. Good. Well, we have local permits. We're waiting for a provisional license, which we expect in a month or two. And then we'll start construction. We'll start, we've done demo, but now then we'll start the new construction in a month or two. There's no steel in the agenda. <laughs> if you have that was, what yes. happened Okay, so good. That was a question we've been waiting because we haven't heard. <laughs> Oh, I, wrote I know you've been waiting too. I, I, um, I appreciate you giving me the numbers so that they could track them. <laughs> Thank you. Find out. Yeah. 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 Uh, we've been working on it for about six weeks. Yeah. The town's as eager as you are to get started. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We want to get people hired, have 50 people employed, and come and eat at a restaurant and all that stuff. That's right. Collect our percentage. Believe me, we're ready. Yeah. Right. Two percent. No, I know. I know. Thank you guys. Thank you for waiting for so long to come I, and say I'm hi. I'm sorry you had to wait. Yeah, we'll see you soon. I'm sure we'll be back again. All right, good. Okay, we'll see thank you. Again. you. Thank you. Happy holidays. You too. Happy holidays. Um, Merry Christmas, sir. Yes. Yeah. Merry Christmas as well. Okay. Um, Can we just, uh, I, I don't know, I just want to make sure that we get the letter out to um, the FERCOG for the technical assistance. So could we just vote that? That's for the culvert to do the inventory. Because okay. the deadline the deadline is like next week or something. It's really and close. So can you explain that to me just so I understand well, what's um, going on? What happened is Chuck called me um, because he knew knew that of course I was interested in the Chuck um, from the highway garage. Okay. And so what he was interested in was um, he had gone up to check something with Ryan and track something down and he Ryan said that he could do the inventory of our culverts that haven't been done. With the done. DTL, TLA money. Yeah, the um, technical assistance mm -hmm. money. So we have what was done under DOTs when they were doing all the damage from Irene. They just, we asked them to expand it and they expanded it a little bit into the town. Okay. And that's how we got the 119 crossings inventoried uh, at the end, far end of town. Okay. But we don't have anything down here and of course it's probably double because there's double the number of roads and right. mileage and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So, and we don't have an idea of the conditions. Obviously, we never knew how bad, like, Kelleher Drive had deteriorated and stuff like that. So the first step is to inventory them, and then you prioritize, you assess them as far as the conditions. So um, if, if we can get under the um, technical assistance money to get Ryan to do the inventory, then we don't have to use up the money for the infrastructure assessment towards the inventory, and the inventory okay. would all be done. So that we can use more of the money on the assessment and then apply, hopefully, for more grants based on their prioritizing of the assessment. So, okay. so it's to our advantage if we can get Ryan to do the inventory and then hand the inventory over to the infrastructure grant to do the assessment rather than do an inventory and assessment. Okay. So we can use up more money for finding out what's really wrong. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that we we have to vote the request to the FERCOG. So do you have so you have the information on that, Diana? Yeah, it's a DLT he said in the DLTA grant, but those have, okay. they're not they haven't issued the request yet. They don't come out until January. Normally they send you a worksheet and you have 
you know, like a whole list we of do things that you can. Every year. Yeah, and then you but sign I, it. No, no, so no. That's this what, is this is, different. Is, this is different. This is different. No, that's what he said. One source is the DLTA program. When the COG sends the DLTA funding requests every December, a town can check that project off as a priority. But you're, so. you're thinking there's a different pot of money. No, it's 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 tip, it's the same pot of money, but it's a different requests than our, it's not our it's not t on the typical requests. Okay, this is a separate request. So I want to make sure that we're sending it up now so that it gets into that line item, okay? Because it's not, if it was already, if it was a typical request, we would have already requested this. No, it doesn't, no, it hasn't come out yet. No, what I'm saying is that it yet. comes out right. certain times it of the year. It comes out, right, yes, like but now. And this is different than that time of the year? Yes. We want, we want this on record with Ryan right now because it's, it's. So we just need to send a letter to them. So that, that, we well, that we are interested in having Ryan Clary do through technical assistance program to do this. Okay. So why don't we send a letter to Ryan? I, okay, I mean Ryan sent me an email that described what to do. So, but I will do that. Yeah, we want the separate letter. We it, it has okay. to be the separate letter because we would have already asked this if this was on the typical list. It's not on the typical list. Okay. This, is this is separate. This is a different program that Ryan does? It's under technical assistance, but it's different than what normally our is request allowed. options are. Okay. Right. Because we've never had this option before. Right, I haven't before. seen that option no, before. No, we would have we would have done it. I mean, I certainly would have done it years ago okay. if we had that opportunity. So we want to send a letter saying, Ryan, our technical assistance money is prioritized towards you doing the assessment or the inventory for us. Okay, and we'll see what he gets back for a response. So I make a motion to send a letter to Ryan at FURACOG that we request that any DTA, DTLA money this year is prioritized towards culvert assessment. Yes, thank you. What's second it? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then- Thank uh, you. Welcome. And then let's see. So uh, this is uh, our consent agenda really includes tonight to accept the annual third party inspection reports from the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District for the closed landfill and transfer station. I read through those and I know Kevin was scooting out. I didn't want to keep him here long, but there were two items that we needed to address and I haven't had a chance to ask him yet, but I assume he read it and he wanted us to sign this would be to uh, have a label on what's available uh, or what, what is acceptable and not acceptable out on the front gate um, and then there That's was uh, to put the, the fluorescent light bulbs in a specific box have them boxed up instead of open so I assume he, he'll address those two things so um, that we would make a motion to do and then the other item on the agenda is to accept the resignation from Frank Morrow from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yes, and tell um, him, thank you, and Frank, yes, for his time. Yes, I would time. just want to say um, how grateful we were to have Frank on that board and chairing that board uh, for as long as he did. He, he was very steady hand at that and um, did a great job and very sorry to see him go. Um, I'm going to approach the two alternates and see if one of them want to take that position. Yes, I, and I think that was down under... Um, we can ask can Adam if you... Somewhere? There yeah. was somewhere to talk about that. Um, well, we can ask... Oh, ZBA request for comment. Oh, no, that's the zoning board. I didn't see it here, so... I just no, it's not it. on I guess here. I saw it somewhere else. Okay. We can um, talk but to yes, we, we sh I would definitely like to, to do that. I think there was a request from the remaining members that they would like to appoint one of the two, and we should discuss that at an yeah. upcoming meeting and get that done for yeah. them okay. so that they can reorganize. Do you know how soon they were planning, CBA was planning to reorganize? <clears throat> no, they were going to put it on their next agenda. Which, do you know, would we meet before that again? Do we have time to kind of think about who, who we would? They don't have another, uh, they're preparing to have a meeting in early January. Okay. So, so we could probably meet before. When's our next before? meeting? You are not scheduled to meet for quite some time because you have two holiday meetings and then Trevor, you were gonna be away, mm -hmm. although Carolyn and David could meet, but that would be the January 8th, I think was the first, I mean, that's the first meeting well, we, after the holidays, unless we, you wanna meet another day. Right, between. we could always meet another day if you wanted. Um, I Trevor, just don't know when, when they're gonna meet. When are you gonna be gone? I'm gonna be gone the 6th, 7th, and 8th. I have to go to Dallas for public. Oh, okay. Well, we could meet later in the week. Yep. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, uh, we could meet the 9th or 10th. Do, and I think Dave, that's you know David's. If you're I don't have my schedule. Yeah, that's David's yet. work. It's your work week for the 8th. You would be normally working on the 8th because our normal meeting would be on the 15th. 
Okay. okay. So I don't, maybe not on the ninth, then, David. So that means I'm available Friday, Friday. that week. Yeah. Okay. Or Monday. Yeah. All right. So yeah, would you would you have a problem with a Friday meeting? No. I don't, okay. No, no, that maybe maybe we could meet Friday then. Okay. Um. Because I, I would rather have the three of us meet. I, yeah, I don't talk, like. I don't like. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we, we I mean, together. we're not that inflexible. It's right. Just, yeah. I think it's always better to have the three of us. Mm-hmm. I do too. So All right. So um, January tenth. Yeah. Let's shoot for the tentative. Yep. Yeah. Okay, but maybe an earlier time, not in the late evening for Friday. You're saying that's a Friday. Yeah, we could do five. I don't care. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not out partying. <laughs> whatever. No, we, whatever we, you guys. I mean, no. Fairly short meeting. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. You no <laughs> pressure. Oh, that's true. Yeah, online? that's true. Yes, that's your. So I think we were talking Thank about you, the 10th, Friday the 10th. Yeah, but you, were you trying we to meet before, before them? them? Was that what you were oh, hoping? Oh, oh, oh. So yeah. the second or third is the only other time we can meet. Oh, I'm in court all day on Friday. December 30th. Third. So we have the second if you wanted to meet them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, mean, I don't really care. It's just discussing who we'd want to appoint for the. But I'd like to have some time and have some uh, discussion with the board members. And um, well, I let's plan. Let's ha tonight. let's plan the select board on the tenth at five o'clock anyway. Okay. okay. All right. And then um, we'll figure it out before. I think yeah, we're gonna have to have another meeting anyway. So we could we mm -hmm. could do that as a, on the agenda. Okay. We're we're gonna have to meet um, sometime before New Year's, I think. So I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Consent. I'll second that. Minutes, but we don't have any minutes. Right, to correct. Yes. Yep. I'll make a uh, second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so we have some old business, the town administrator hiring and review draft survey bounds for Merrigan Way. Right. Date on today's Which visit. Which you did that already. We did. Mm -hmm. We did that already. Yep. Um, so. Uh, um, I think Davis. Town administrator hiring. I'd like to get a uh, meeting posted for next Monday. Um, the 23rd for the um, at for four o'clock for, for the screening committee okay okay and who's on the screening committee Dave you and that... John Pichurik. okay okay and then were you gonna have us meet afterwards we can no. yes if you can't if you're oh, I just I have a boo meeting that night. Um, Could make it at six. Your boo would go an hour. What do you have? No. Boo. The board of oversight on that day. We're supposed to go over budget. It's um, at five on the twenty-third. Mm -hmm. We're trying to jam it in because we got to get I it know. done, and I've just had so many meetings. And well, Jonathan has that meeting at one o'clock. Do you know what that that's about? Jonathan does. Yeah. Haven't you been in that in email train? Mm -hmm. There's a governor's office, governor's representative meeting down in Waitley. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Really? No. How did I get the email then? If you didn't get know. it. Maybe he's mad at me. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. We Jonathan haven't. probably figured your schedule was empty, so he just <laughs> see if you want to go. Got nothing to oh, do. Oh God, right? nothing to do before Christmas. I don't know. I could check I, uh, in with him, but I don't. Uh, yeah, know it's at one o'clock. I mean. Um, well, maybe he thought I'd be working because I am. I, I've got so much going on. Okay. Okay. So. Um, um, I had a, one thing I was hoping. I'm sorry that um, I, that Barbara had gone to see the. Um, she'd written a letter about. Uh, a personnel adjustment and gone to see the personnel board and she's yes. here and I wanted I was hoping you could discuss yeah, that sure you would I think you would talk to her about it Trevor but yep um, this change is like sort of a timely change so I didn't want to wait another mm -hmm. agenda. Barbara would probably like to go and home. She did, Barbara's here and she did <laughs> you want to come up Barbara? We'll just chat about this a bit. So, so a um, update on and this, do, you, do you want me to go over this, or do you want to just do a recap real quick for us? Sure, I'd be happy right. to. Yeah. Where, um, where am I going? Yeah. Anywhere you'd like. <laughs> Pick a microphone. I was talking to myself. I'm like, where am I going? Where am I going? In the corner. Um, I don't know if all of you are aware, but um, Sarah is expected to take, expected being the pertinent word, mm -hmm. um, some time off uh, coming in January. So 
having known this, we've been working in our office very hard to prepare for this void that we'll, we'll have for about two and a half months. So um, Jen has agreed and has been working diligently with Sarah to take over some of her duties as I will also take over some of Sarah's duties. Um, but I just wanted to request in recognition of Jen's um, extra efforts and willingness to cover if we could give her a little bump up Mm -hmm. in the time that Sarah's gone, maybe to a, a step one of Sarah's assistant mm -hmm. position just for those three months and then back. Um, I, I don't think she expects it, but I do have to say that Jen yes. has like seized every opportunity for any schooling. She's, She's driven to the Berkshires for a couple of like um, mentoring programs with, with the town clerks. She is doing phenomenal. She takes a lot of, um, things on her own and figures them out. That's She's, wonderful. She's um, great negotiating employee. her way through dealing with state agencies and funeral homes and yeah. home births and voter registrations. And she's really, really stepped up. So, That's awesome. So, and she was willing to do this. And she's actually agreed to go to the uh, Amherst UMass Schooling for Treasurer Collectors <coughs> since Sarah and I are both certified now. Um, so we won't really be attending as much as we were. Yeah. And um, in the uh, Collector Treasurer Association has recognized the fact that um, we're having a hard time as an association getting um, new younger people to come into the profession. So yeah. they've opened up their schooling to staff members as well, not just um, collectors treasurers. So uh, Jen hopped right on that and she's gonna go um, in August to take some classes. She can't get certified, but maybe they'll change that at some yeah. point. But um, she, yeah, she really no, likes that's great. taking on new opportunities. So, yep. so anyway, I wanted to request that we could um, bump her up. Yep. Um, I make that motion that we. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I, I did take uh, the letter a step further in yep. considering doing um, a step adjustment for her, and she's agreed to. Um, yeah. I don't know, but maybe. Sitting with somebody, we might consider regrading would, that. Or, I but, like but I did at least want to. Um, I think she's really functioning um, at, at a much higher than a step three. Right. Um, she's 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 doing great. Yep. So a lot of times we bump people up to hire them, but I just right. want to say we hired her at one, and I think bump she's really <laughs> uh, <laughs> stepped up. So. Yeah. Um, I think I think that's completely warranted. She's been doing a great job and has yeah. really excelled at what she does. And um, I'd really love to recognize we, that. Uh, I was just going to say, we want to award initiative like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm so. sure you would. And I just wanted to let you know, it's hard to know what's happening in the office, but um, yep. it's really great. I mean, we're going to miss Sarah while she's gone, but sure. I think we've been working on this for about three months now. To get um, ready. You know, kind yep. of, yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, it's great Sarah to see does such planning. a fantastic job. She that, does. She's uh, amazing. Anyway. Amazing. We're really happy. We'll hold her. our breath until she comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, um, so then, uh, yeah. So you've made a motion to. I made the motion to accept the recommendation of the of, of the, the bump. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any further discussion? Well, Dave has um, to second it. The. Um, or you have to second it. Second what impact it. would it have on your budget if we didn't move her back after you moved her up? Yep, um, I did. Um, I already talked to personnel, and Skip was there, obviously, as a personnel board member. Um, and so I did uh, recognize the fact that if I uh, bump her up and my salary budget is going to be over a little bit, I think we figured it might be somewhere like sixteen or seventeen hundred. Um, so I, I will here. appear before the finance yeah. committee just so I can so they can have a conversation with me. But um, you're saying what if you leave her that way? Yeah. Yeah. He's asking yeah. a different question. I'd like to leave her, leave her at that. Oh, well. Increase, if you could. Well, Only because the difficulty we have of hiring good people that have initiative right. mm. is worth a lot more than the yeah, money that well, we're talking about. And, and I agree, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm glad you're hearing You know, what little time I've yeah. spent over there, yeah. uh, the initiative yeah. and, you know, yeah. the... Just you the know, harmonious it, getting together. A lot of it is the face of the office, too. Yeah. yeah. It's a great and, and um, it's, um, trio, really. We mm -hmm. all work together, and yeah. we um, accomplish a great deal. Yeah. Um, maybe we could talk about yeah, just um, examining that that um, as a grade three. Mm -hmm. I, I know Skip showed me the 
um, matrix or however yep. you do figure that out, and, and maybe in the end that's where it would land. Right. Um, well, let's do that. Let's so look, at that. look at that. Over this time, obviously. We'll in the three, maybe yeah. in the three in months the three in the months, budget we'll prep, at, right. um, yeah. maybe we can. Exactly. Um, if you would really work with, if somebody would yes, agree we'll to work that. on that with me, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Yeah. 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 Because, I'd appreciate that. Like I said, it's great. you know. Yeah. You know, having to deal with a lot of employees over the time. You know, you get those few employees that really do this. Yeah. You I try agree. to make sure you're treating them well oh yeah and, and she it's is it. extremely pleasant and yes. effective on the phone and with Absolutely. people at the window so it's it's fantastic all Good. around really Good. um going Good. well and i and i have to thank you again as i did i mentioned that the personnel board would skip in attendance how much we appreciate the um software that we had done about five years ago we're still celebrating when we <laughs> <laughs> you know when we issue the bills um when we are posting payments the accuracy it's just um I think it's taken the place of like a part-time person because yeah. when I first came, I thought we just can't keep doing this, and um, the ease of operation is incredible. That's so, great. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take this opportunity to remind people that everything, uh, real estate bills and sewer bills, are due January 10th. So, yep. um, hopefully, everyone has their bills by now. Okay. Yeah. Good. Very great. good. So, do um, you have a second on this? Yeah, I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, you know, I'd just like to, in the next three months, have yes. the discussion. Yeah, to see about what next year, definitely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. Yes, I agree. All okay. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank great. you, Barbara. Thank great. you very much. Would you like something for me to say they voted that, basically? Send um, sure, anything right. that you can include in the thing. So okay. then, uh, let's see. So Thank you. Thank you Thank you, Thank you Barbara. Yes. yes, Merry Christmas. Can I just ask Trevor? Um, what do you have a schedule for coming in for the warrant next week? Yes. What would you? What day would you need me? Um, maybe Tuesday anytime. Or? Tuesday the twenty fourth. You know, sure. like Christmas Eve. Yeah, you know? can like you pop here. in? We'll here till noon on yeah. Tuesday. I'll come in early if yeah. you, if you yeah. have it. We'll right. remind you. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. And, sure. and if he can't, I can. Yeah. If you're around, sure. I, I am One around. will come in for okay. sure. Perfect. Yep. Usually that's my time to do a Christmas shopping. But. Right. <laughs> we don't I want am, to get in the way of that. You can <laughs> sneak out and do your Christmas shopping, and I'm you can say you're going to sign the warrant. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're going to be baking. <laughs> I am not volunteering for that. Great. Uh, Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, okay. let's see. Back Review and approve the um, annual select board board of health license renewals. Yes. Attached. Okay. So you have also a list, but um, you did want to... Um, oh, see the good. packets, and so I wanted to have mm -hmm. them available. So here's all the packets, and normally okay. we just do stamp them, but you know I wanted yep, you to that's know fine. certainly yep. there's one that isn't so we have to be reissued, and then these are all the other additional licenses: mm -hmm. class ones, twos, threes, etc. Okay, so for um, all alcohol on premises, we have uh, Giovanni uh, Figs Restaurant LLC, Historic Deerfield Deerfield Inn, Hotel Warren, Leo's Table. Magic Wings uh, Corporation, um, Polish American Citizens Club, Tavern uh, Sports Bar, The Walk, and Wolfie's Restaurant. And all of these were checked out with the police department? And fire department, right? Police and fire, they've all been checked, right? In I, I mean, I don't know, in terms of what, what do you, which ones are you looking at? Is there oh, any, all, all, all of them? Oh, well, all the, the any, any required, um, you know, check-in we've gotten, I don't know about I'm you know, just thinking the, of the police. Yeah, the, I'm not sure what we do with what check in we do with the police department. Do, if well, there's any problem. Yeah, if they have any I'm issues sure, or they're. Right, I'm going to brought those to our attention. I yeah. have not right. seen any. No. Right. You know. I assume Pat Pat processes a whole list and I think distributes that to everybody so we make sure there's no taxes owed and there's right. no issues with yep. any of the licenses. Mm -hmm. We did have, you know, an issue with yeah, some of well, the fire I just, certificate. Yeah. I just but. want to make sure that there's no police issues. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't think we do, right? I have not heard of any. No. So, no. Okay. No. I'll We're just supposed she, to, before, before, yeah, I'll I before they're issued, I just the yes. run right. it by John, please. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, we can vote them. Yep. There's no, I, I have no problem. So make a motion to approve um, those all alcohol on-premise licenses as, as Right, stated. but just yes. subject Check to. It. Subject to the police department. Department of making off. sure there's yep. no issues, right. Um, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. <laughs> okay, or whatever. Vice versa. Whatever. All those in favor? Aye. For the discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, this is all alcohol off premises, which would be the Deerfield Spirit Shop and 
Purple Metal Ventures, DB, uh, DBA is the Deerfield River Liquors. Um, we okay. have uh, addressed any issues and nothing has uh, resurfaced and I know um, the issues we had this past year have been addressed with. Um, I was going to say, you are aware of the couple issues aware. that yeah. have been brought up. Have, have, yeah. Have and, and, have and I right. know that uh, Chief has been working with them and they've been great and I think um, Brian um, Ravish has also been working with yep. um, the companies to make sure that they're helping out any way they can. And uh, so I would make a have, motion. Have, well, Go ahead. I was just wondering if we validated that they have contributed to the education fund. I have not. But I know that he's been, when I've seen Brian, who's our school resource officer, yeah. I know that they've been working together. But I didn't ask specific as to okay. what they've done. But, okay. No, I'm um, sure they have. I, yeah, I, I, just, I, I, I just make sure that yeah. it yeah, gets checked. Yeah, we'll double checked. check on that when, yep. when we check with Chief on these others. So, mm -hmm. so um, I'll make a motion to approve the, those two for Deerfield Spirit Shop and Purple uh, Metal Ventures. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, this is mine, uh, see, excuse me, wine and malt off premise. This is uh, Bitter Street, uh, Bittersweet Bakery and Cafe, Cheslick's Market, um, Circle K, Massachusetts, uh, D DBA Circle K, Deerfield Convenience Store, and uh, let's see, VYASMAN Inc. Doing, doing business as Conway Road Neighbors. Again, um, as long as they're okay with the police department, I have no problem. I'll make that motion to approve. I'll second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just, you know, make sure that before and they're no. issued that yep. Don is okay with them. We only have one that's um, on hold right now for a fire um, certification. I make a motion that we approve the license condition on issuing uh, once the fire certificate is issued. Yeah, just not issue it. So only issue that's it on once. A, that's advice on, of council. Okay, as to approve this We, we approve the license, but we don't issue it until we get the certificate from the fire department. Okay, so if they don't, let me just clarify that. If they don't get um, their license by the... If they uh, don't have a fire certificate inspection. And they don't get their license by the first, they need to reapply. No. No. This is not issued. We, we are approving it, but we're not issuing the license. Once they get the, the basically the fire suppression system done and inspected, we can issue the license to them once we get the certificate from the fire department. And it doesn't have to be before uh, December 31st. It can be after. It can be in January. They just can't, once January 1, they just can't serve any until they get the new. It, they, we actually issue the license. And you have all the paperwork, right? I don't have it with me. Oh. It's The office was locked. In there. Who's oh. talked to council on this? I did. And, and what, what did they say? That's, they Lisa's said. recommendation was to issue the license. Yeah. Uh, to, to approve the license, I'm sorry, but not issue it until they get the certificate from the fire. Okay. And once that is done, then we can issue it. They can just come in to, um, and see Pat and the, the license. And show the certificate. Show, show the. So, this is this so this is one issue but wasn't the other whole issue is that we were having them rework the way that they did business over there that's on the entertainment license that's a different no, it's the outside premise not the entertainment the outside premise yeah that yeah. that's a that's a whole different they haven't a, they haven't applied for outside premise yeah yet. i Correct. see so they can only apply so i just wanted to make sure i get this clear so i know what i'm talking about when people ask me so there's a there's a on-site wine and malt and mm -hmm. that they can do we could approve that tonight but not issue it right and and they can only, it only gets issued if they pass their fire right then there is a outside yeah. permit yeah that's that they, as far as I know they right. have not applied for anything on right. that. Yeah. and they haven't talked with the they were going to talk with Boston they, they would have to apply. So basically, they, they have to, to do a change of premise, right? They right. only have they the indoor in, in, premise they licensed. In, they have not initiated any of that process yet that we no. would ask them to do. Okay. Correct. Or if they wanted to do that, that's yep. up right. to them. Yep. And okay. Dave was going to check in with them 
sometime over <coughs> January to make sure that that paperwork gets started so it's not springtime and nothing's been done. Right, because they won't right. get one. Right. Yep. right. So. Because okay. the paperwork takes a little, I mean, we don't have control over that. So it's important to get the paperwork in the process. Okay. So the motion is to approve the uh, license. But not issue. But cannot be issued until the, uh, the, the fire, fire chief signs off on all fire safety stuff. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, so and then what is she proposing you would, you're going to submit to ABCC? Because you have to put... When you submit to ABCC, you have to put down, you know, what was voted. And the only thing about that is the law says you can't vote the license unless you have the certificate in hand. Yeah. It basically I'm, says I'm, that. That's what, we so. that's what I thought. But when mm -hmm. I talked to Lisa, this is the way she said to do it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> do we have to do this tonight? You could, has to be well, done you the could end of the do year. it December, right. have another meeting before the end of December. The other thing is that legally, if the license is not... Uh, again, I, I mean, maybe when you're saying approved but not issued, but I don't right. know how you could approve and not issue it in ABCC's well, mind. I don't know what the distinction is. So we'd have to get clarification. She said she had to do this with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so I, I, no, I, yeah, there must you know, be some way to fill out the paperwork to you know, indicate that. It's it's hopefully it will get done. It looks like he's pulled the permits. It looks like he's got yeah. all this stuff I, I mean, ready Bill to go. says it's not going to probably yeah. be done by the end of the year, so we should come to terms with that. Yeah, and I, I think we, we should just, we can verify with Lisa, but double check maybe with can ABCC. Can we just do this next week or not? If Could you be. have a meeting, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, but we you weren't can. sure. So, I, I mean, I make a motion that we vote on it based on Dave's conversation with Lisa. I'm going to abstain because I don't feel comfortable until I know. No, for that's sure. fine. From, as from long as it's clear that, that it not be from the lawyer that says it's okay to Diana, do that. Diana, make sure it's not issued. Pat has not does not issue it until we receive the fire certificate. Okay. I was told not to not to not to do the license until that was done, and that so I feel very uncomfortable moving forward until that's right. But well, I was just under the assumption that. You know, I was talking to Lisa about something else, mm -hmm. and then I just asked her. I says, right now we have, mm -hmm. I was specific with BBC. I says, um, they have an issue with the fire suppression system mm -hmm. uh, that was modified, and it does not, is not approved. And I says, you know, uh, what's the best course of action for us to do here? And that's when she said that that was what, you know, she recommended. I, I just okay. don't want to hold up process if he gets this done, when he gets this done, because we might not be able to meet. So that's why I'm supporting it. And oh, I, I would definitely come in and meet. Um, yeah, but we have to post a meeting. And, yeah. and it, so I would like us to issue it. I, I would second Dave's motion. And then if it's, it's, as long as it's not issued, it's not an issue until we have the certificate. It's not like we're doing anything. It's just you to post another meeting and then, I mean, we might lose, hold him up by not posting the meeting. Being able to, because we can't, we can't like just come in and sign it and so, vote it. We have to, we have to post it 48 hours. So the fire chief said, please make sure that this liquid, that this liquor license is not renewed until all the items are addressed and the certificate is signed by Bob Walden and myself. That's right, and I talked to Bill too. That's issue. And I told him that we would not issue it until it was signed off, because I agree. But we're it's renewing it. We're renewing it, but we're not issuing it. It's a to he, if, if, we, if it's not issued, then he can, he, and he doesn't have his system in place, on January 1st, he can't, he can't use it. It's not issued. Mm -hmm. And I mean, based on the conversation that Dave has, it's, we're okay. But this way, we're not holding it up if by postings and trying to get a meeting together, because we can't seem well, to get a lot done. How long does it hang on until he, like, if you have all year to fix it? Well, it's, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's incumbent on him because mm -hmm. he can't, he can't, he can't open. He can't open until that's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not our, 
It's up to him. You know, because I don't want to be a stick in the mud. It's just, our, it's my, you know, it's legally, we are majorly responsible if anything happens there and we've issued a license that shouldn't have been, so. But he, he it's not, it's not. It's not issued. It's okay. not issued. It's approved, but it's, not issued. That's right. That's what Lisa's saying. It's approved, but just, not issued. So I'll, I'll and I to, because and I'd I, rather have that from Lisa in writing before I did anything like that. That's, that's okay. But I told me. Bill that I absolutely understood, so I would not approve of an issuance. And that's, we're approving it from a, uh, you know, the paperwork end of it, but we're not issuing it until we have this signed off certificate. Because I agree with Bill 100% on this. Mm -hmm. I do. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to circumvent the fire district Understood. at all. Um, I'm supporting and, you know, the fire that, district. That has, you know, public safety is our first concern. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just, you know, and, you know, the question was, well, is, can there be an extension? No. Yes. Right. It was a flat no. No, there, there, there can't be an extension. No. no. It, and the thing is, I don't, I, as far as the extension, well, I don't think that you can, you can, if the stuff isn't solved by the end of the year, I don't think that at some point in February he can just come in on the renewal. That's what I'm saying. I don't think, I know what you're trying to, you're trying to sort of hold it open so in February he can come in and renew. He can't do that. ABCC won't won't allow that. If he's not set as of December 31st to renew, he can't renew. That's basically what the I'm law just going is. by what Lisa told me. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just saying, I think and that's... You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making this up or anything. Yeah, of course not. When I called and, Lisa, you know, right. one, you know, I wanted to talk to her about yeah. Yeah. Uh, some other issues. Yeah. I think that's what you're But then it was specifically too. about BBC. I says, yeah. you know, you know, I basically said, hey, he doesn't this have his issue. fire suppression right. system in place. Um, he's supposed to have somebody working on it. Uh, it's not done. Mm -hmm. um, right. Not yeah. done what, what do we do? Yeah. And she says, "What you can do is maybe she meant through to the, through the end the of the year. Through the end of the year, so we don't no, have to meet through no, the end no, of the year. No, because it's valid until the end of the year right now. Correct. But then, but she said, what she said was, in our meeting, we can approve the license, but not issue it. Okay. And once he comes in and all." With this certificate and everything, we can issue it. But even okay. if that's in like February or March or April or May, she didn't of next put a year. time frame on it. Okay, okay. so that's what I'm asking. It can be yeah. any time. So yeah. yeah, I think we'd have to verify. He that can't with ABC. open it, right? But it doesn't yeah. matter. We can vote it, and I and I second it. So go. Let's all those in favor. Aye. Aye. No. And you want to say fine? No. We're moving on. You're voting no. I'm voting no. Yeah. Okay. Until that's I fine. have until yeah. I have just okay. that's yeah. fine. Yep. Just okay. move ahead so, here. But, I think but it's effective a great idea. If until, the plan works, right. that's yeah. awesome. But I want to be clear that as of December 31st, if the, if the fire suppression system is not in place, he does not have a license. So on January 1st, the serve. tap room is has closed. to close. It's closed yes. until he yeah. gets yeah. that yeah. certificate right. in to right. us. And we the can't only time issue. that he can be open, Pat, in 2020 is from midnight to 1 o'clock. If he happens to be open New Year's Eve because they allow that. Okay. But. All right. So um, that takes care of the... We have to do the, the cars. Liquid license. But yep. here again, it's just, you know, obviously, you know, public safety is the first concern, mm -hmm. and this stuff has to be done. You know, on the, the subsequent inspection, the, the wiring and everything, issues that were there, those were all taken care of. Mm -hmm. The only thing was the uh, sprinkler system, my understanding, and... Part of the issue with the sprinkler system was some of the work that was being done over there was not being done by a licensed sprinkler person. Okay. So now he has hired a licensed sprinkler person, and the permits have been applied for and everything. Those okay. are in the commissioner's office. All right. So the um, moving on to the uh, Class 1 dealers, uh, we have um, one, Carla Azayak for Bobo Cars of Pioneer Valley. Uh, slash TNM Auto Corp. Carla. Carla. Kuzenzi. Uh, yes, Zayak. She's been married. Um, so she uh, still goes by Kuzenzi on TV. Oh, I would. Um, <laughs> I would make a motion to Does approve that, knows her? and then I'll go through the others. Yeah. Yeah. Any further discussion? Yeah. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So the class two dealers would be Brian Atherton, uh, Two Feathers Restoration and Design, Richard uh, Patego, Richards Automotive. 
uh, Greg Gardner, GMG Enterprises, uh, Gary and Scott uh, Kolakowski, Deerfield Motors and Equipment, and Joseph uh, Kostick, Jr., Country Roads. Any mm -hmm. questions Second. on that? Nope, I'm Second on that. Second on that. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I make a motion that we suspend reading all these and just uh, they'll be posted on our, our website if anybody has any questions. Um, so I have a motion on the table to forego the reading. Second. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just that we got this one, then we got that other one with the what? No, that's it. For the same thing. Well, I thought there was another paper here with about 40 minutes. No. Yeah, I think we, yeah. I, I mean, we may have just given you the lists. I don't, we gave oh, you the yeah. list of all the yeah. licenses for Board of Select Board, but also Board of Health, but just we, for information. We've got this Board of yeah. Health renewals, yeah, too. Just, yep. just for information purposes. No, I don't plan on reading that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I don't think we normally do, David. It was more just for your information because you're the Board of Health. And yeah. Those are your licenses. Okay. Yep. So <laughs> There's I a just, lot uh, of them. It was going to take an hour to read it. <laughs> no, I'm not reading all those. Um, so the motion to forego the reading of the class dealer licenses, junior director and home business renewals, yearly entertainment, annual resident auctioneer, and annual non-resident auctioneer. You have a second on that? Yes, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 This, um, we'll not continue with the reading, but these, um, I'll make a motion to now, a motion to approve all the licenses listed in front of us. We'll second it. There's uh, 40, 40 food, for food service. Um. Uh, let me just do these first and then oh, okay. let me just go to those. Um, motion to approve all the um, select board renewals. Yep. Second. So all Second. those in favor? Aye. 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 These will be posted on the town website for review. The next item you had, which I don't know if I had. Oh, here it is. Yep. So board of health renewals for 2020. This be for food service, uh, common vicular, I always get that wrong, um, tobacco sales, uh, indoor ice rink, hotel, motel inn, disposal work installers, and oh, fall? Awful. What's an awful? <laughs> That's a poop. Really? Yes. That's what they call that? Yeah. What? Well, I accept it. <laughs> it is awful, awful. isn't it? Oh. Is that where it came from? It's not spelled the same. <laughs> anyway, so motion to approve all the Board of Health renewals for 2020. These will also be um, available for review on our town website. I make that second. Any further discussion? Um, Do you want me to read them? Not, well, no, it's just <laughs> not to, the hotel motel in. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't know uh, if the hotel, the rooms there that were rented out daily, weekly, or how that was done. I think Bob, I pat checked with Bob, and he has that as a boarding house, which I think is different, I feel like, or he, okay. they did talk about that. Okay. I know she I did just, mention, she did ask just about that. Uh, room question. rentals are different. Yeah. So they have a different not, permit for that? Yeah. Well, they now, do from what I understand, the DO, uh, DOR has passed new regulations on uh, yes. Airbnbs and mm -hmm. those on the daily, now those are taxed. Right. Yeah, I think they have a more like on a boarding house way, like um, sure. temporary housing or weekly. Uh, well, yeah, we've had that more. short term housing one for a while. Yeah. It's so. not, it's not. Okay, um, I just asked. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's not so considered. I just want to make sure we're not. Yeah, missing. the only um, other one that I was, what happened to the Red Roof Inn one? Isn't the Red Roof Inn a motel, hotel inn one? Yeah, that's what I'm, we usually do approve those, and I have not seen them on the list this year. All right, I'll have to check into that Red Roof Inn. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. The Red okay. Roof Inn. Just check with the hot well. Is that a um, is that a Board of Health permit or a Select Board permit we that you're looking at? This is Board of Health. Okay. Board of Health stuff. All right. Yeah. Um, the Board of Health, well. And Hotel Warren. Okay. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the swimming pool one isn't on here either. The yeah. Red because Roof Inn has a swimming pool. Yeah, and we just had an issue in the spring. I think Dick just updated that. We had some some issues, so I'll verify Check what's going on, on with that okay. in the swimming pool. Yeah, thank you for reminding so me. So we may revisit a few of these next meeting. So, um, yeah, um, I, I think it will be, if, if there's any problem, we can come in and yes. we'll try to get to that, you know. Yep. Okay. We'll meet on Christmas Eve. You can meet on Christmas. You can meet on the Monday, December thirtieth. What's Christmas wrong with you Eve, guys? That's not that bad. The bar in my house is open at four o'clock. <laughs> All right. 
meeting on Christmas Eve. We have dinner. We have dinner at five thirty. So we'll be there. You got an hour and a half in the bar. At that point, maybe I will. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Back to our. Keep losing track. Um, okay. So. <laughs> so we have the the assessment for um, the building assessment contract. Yeah, so building assessment make, contract. So we want to make sure we get that. As one Julie done. said, we went back and forth on that. We finally got, um, and the committee met and recommended it. And Lisa's reviewed the contract. It's for forty thousand uh, dollars, thirty thousand to be spent on the three buildings and not to exceed 10,000 to be spent on the church. Um, that's how we set it up um, at your request. Um, so Scott Richardson, who's the principal, has signed that contract and I'm asking you to award it and sign that contract. Do I have a contract? Henry, I'm sorry, it's right here. Lisa just got it back to me in the last couple of days, so sorry. I'm trying to we can't sign it. There's no stickies. To I know. Where I'm so that? sorry yeah. for no stickies. Okay. I'm just so, um, dropping the ball. So, uh, can I have a motion to approve the award the contract to GRLA for town building assessment project? Make that motion. I'll no, second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. The contract the next contract that I really want signed because I promised Janamine I was on the phone with her two two or three times today or three <laughs> times today um, you this do? is one that was supposed to be signed back in October oh. and this is um, it's for a small grant the RDP um, calculation grant it gives us money for um, Oh, yard waste, household hazardous waste, it's, it's, a little, it's a little money. Anyway, this is money that comes to us because we participate in the solid waste district. And we were supposed, that we, they can't release the money until they get this signed. So, um, I thought it was for 4,200. This says for 5,600, but maybe I had the wrong number. Hmm. Anyway, it's just no, a small amount of money. Right. I think that's right, Carolyn. There was this was in it was in the signing. Is this the one I got for? It was forwarded to Pat to print out. I think so. We uh, Pat, I think we had had a letter from Jan, but never had an attachment. And then we just got this attachment. Is this the one you're looking yeah. at? Uh, I, I I thought it was for forty two hundred. Yeah. That's what she just sent as the attachment. Okay. So. I make a motion that we um, approve signing this. Yeah, it's for 5600 I thought it was for 42 but. And here, here's a copy of that's what they were looking or at. Or we authorize uh, Trevor to sign. This is, this is our, our standard participant. It's the Recycling Dividend Program. Mm -hmm. The DEP awards us, and we get a certain amount of points. But they can't release the money until um, we sign this. And um, so we need to have can recycling in all municipal buildings, which we do. Yep, we do. Offices and meeting spaces, all municipalities shall continue such paper, bottle, can recycling during the term of the contract. We do. We recycle everything. Right. Buying recyclable products. We do. We send out a policy every year. Policy. We make sure people yep. sign it. Pipe paper and stuff. Yep. And we, um, so we have 16 okay. points, and the value of every point is 350 bucks. Okay. So that's that's how we get the 5600. Although I thought, it, like I said, I thought it was 4200, but whatever. They can't pay us until we sign this contract. Okay. So I make a motion that we sign the contract. Second that. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have a fresh one to sign? Right here. Oh, right here. Okay. With, a yeah. Yeah. with a sticky. With a sticky on. With a sticky. And <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> please make sure that it gets scanned. Uh, scan and to, send it to right Jenny. away. Yeah. I told her I would take care of it. We're the only town that haven't returned it, yeah, I guess. How much you data? And then our next 
item is to uh, award the bid for the Town of Deerfield Secondary Clarifier Upgrades Project to Waterline Industries Corporation of Seabrook, New Hampshire in the amount of $597,677. I second that. So this is to, um, is to get moving on our only clarifier, they call it secondary, but the only clarifier project. <coughs> I think um, I think we're in good shape. They, you know, this bid came in a much better than the first time we oh, went yeah. out because we're yeah, taking over that. 500,000 left. Yeah, with that responsibility. Um, this is the lower bidder. The other bid was Delray and that was uh, $614,666. So the, both bids were very similar to each other. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody's, you know, done the assessment on the team and, and feels like these would be a great, they were both excellent to work with. These just are less money, so. Okay. Uh, all right, so second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I, I just want to put in the minutes, thank Keith for yes. having the initiative to, to do this. Um, Which one do you want? Do you have do you one have to sign? But, Keith, but, but through Keith's initiative, he's um, saving us the money. Did Was there a signature? Um, whatever she had in the packet, I don't know if David sent a signature thing, did he? I don't see one. I think he just made a, they just sent a thing to make the recommendation. Yeah, but you have to sign. Yeah, I'm going to vote to sign. sign. Yeah. All right, I'll double yeah. check. Okay. Um, but, um, what yeah, there she should had, be a bigger contract than this to sign. Yeah, yeah. The, I had only seen a two-page thing that they'd sent for a recommendation. I'll Let look and see if there was a... I'll be right back. Yeah, see, I don't know if they sent you something, Trevor. Why do I have 15,000 copies of this stuff, Franklin? I guess, does the Solid Waste District want you to sign this in, in quadruplicate? Probably. Yeah. Because it's like got to it. go to different. I guess so, yeah. That's the one That's that. That's the um, monitoring stuff, third party monitoring. Yes. Yeah. And the other one we're going to sign, but we're going to send it to Jan, okay, to hold. Yeah, I'm going to scan it. Send it okay, to not Jan. send it to the place. Make sure it doesn't go to, to the address. To the Murph. It goes to Jan. Oh, to DP. She, yeah. No, no, no. It's not, not to DP. Right. It's that going to Jan. Sure. Make sure it goes to Jan. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to put a sticky on it so Pat doesn't send it out by mistake? Actually, I'm just going to put a note on for her to scan it and send it, and then we'll okay. put a hard copy in the mail. All right. I I don't. I want to make sure that we are cooperating with them 100%. Yeah, we'll copy you. In we can have them send one because that's yeah. all I have too. Is okay. Note, yeah, I don't. Sign, I don't know so. what he wanted you to sign. So okay. All right. We'll ask him for oh, that. Oh, so so I'm not. These are for you. I'll come in and sign them. So the solid waste one, we're we're going to vote to sign it. Okay. And it's going to go to Jan, and we're going to hold. Then. Have Jan hold it. Okay. And then and when figure she, out what happens. Yeah. All right. I I because she's gonna try to work. There's a lot of sticky notes there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh right, because there's many yeah. copies. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. I did read over this already. So okay. Um, so motion to sign the the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District's recycling. No second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, this is the third party one. Oh yeah, you already did that. You're just signing multiple copies. Okay. And then um, that, what you're talking about, uh, is Carolyn, the, yeah, is the recycling, recycling thing. Right, do we I don't have, have that, that too? Because yes. I don't, I didn't, I had this RDP thing and I had those things, but, and then no, I have this, the shed grant. This, no, the R, RDP was the one I just sent today. Yeah. But the, what are you, what's the other thing you're referring to? This, this well, the, what was in the newspaper today. Oh, okay. was the one that we have to vote to do. Okay. And, I think Kevin is carrying that. we're not sending it to DEP. We're sending it to Jan to hold. Okay. She's going to hold all the towns. When I had, we had our Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition meeting on Monday, all, everybody that was on the steering committee was all agreeing as boards of health to have Jan hold it. You know, everyone was saying they were going to do the same thing. Okay. So Jan is trying to, I don't want to say that, but she's trying to help us shave off a few more bucks by making them nervous, by not sending it, not having people send it in. As far as I know, there's only been a couple towns, three or four towns that have sent in their signed contract to the MRF. Yeah. Well, I'm nervous that 
I mean, it's a well, I guess as long as we signed it. Because well, I just want to make sure the lawyer we're not stuck is concerned. Out on our own. No, no, the lawyer is concerned that the contract wasn't written properly, and she wanted us to spend the money on our lawyer to look at it. And I'm like, no, we'll sign it, send it up to Jan. Jan can hold it. If they want to rewrite the contract, then they'll have to send out new copies to everybody, and we'll, we'll send a new copy. But we'll vote to approve it at the 9350 mm -hmm. or whatever it is. But then we send it up to Jan, and Jan's going to sit on it and try to negotiate a better price. Okay. And that's what everyone was going to do at our meeting. You know, that's what we were encouraging each other to do, to go back and encourage everybody to send it to Jan so that she has the power of working with the whole group behind her. Okay. And I, and I had volunteered to do phone calls or whatever if there was something that she needed done. Because she's trying to organize this for us. Right. And it has significant impact on money. So obviously we want to do as much as we can to, you know, to help her. Yep. But it seemed like everybody was organizing fairly. I mean, there's a lot of conversation happening. A lot happening. of money, for sure. I know. Well, there's a lot of conversation happening because it's huge budget impacts. Yeah. Especially yeah. for a lot of smaller towns, too. I know. It's, and it's shocking. It was like out of the, out of the blue. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we thought they were going to be like... Well, well, I, knew, I think all of us knew there was going to be some increase, but we just didn't know there was going to be such a giant increase. And so Jan is also looking at taking the glass and this is for a $5 savings per ton. It's taking the glass to, you know, to be locally done up to um, New Hampshire, and it would be into fiberglass, you know, like insulation. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's really worth separating it all for 5 bucks a ton. You know, that means a whole... We have space um, in the, at the transfer station to put up a separate area. But yeah. You know, that's retraining all our people to do that. And that, you know, you're going to have transition problems. And I don't know. I told her I, I wasn't sure if, if it was worth it for us. But we would think about it. Right. I don't know. It's up to, it's up to you guys if we want to force Kevin. It's just that, you know, you got to train people to, to recycle different. Thank you know, to put their glass out. Yeah. Right now we have the single stream. Well, we have dual stream. We have the you know the papers and stuff, but then we have our all our plastics and glasses are together. And to separate out the glass for five dollars less on the ton, so you're talking still eighty eight dollars. I know USA does a lot of the pickups in town now because do so sold out. To right. Them. The uh, paper, plastic. The glass all go in the same container. So we had uh, so paper was 185 tons, containers was 116 tons, so a total of 301 ton. Um, at 9350 is 28,204 dollars. Without glass, we'd be about without glass tonnage is 243 tons, so about 21,000 dollars. So you save about seven grand or so. Yeah, but are we going to be able to train people in a short period of time? Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know. I know that it was more money if you put it all in a one stream, like you say, put it all in one spot. It was even more money, but. Well, no, we have people trained to do the dual we do. stream. We do. They do. A good so job. we. I mean, compared to everybody but else, it's we just, recycle a it's, ton. Yeah. You know, it's to, just that. Yeah. <clears throat> to ask people to separate it out is an education process, and yeah. I'm not sure if we can pull it off for five and if it's really worth it because now kevin has to set up a separate place it's going to be cost money too and then you're then you're re-trucking it up to to keen mm -hmm. so i told her that we would talk about it yeah, We'd, you know we, yeah. i wouldn't be surprised if plastic gets the same thing here shortly right because the China market is shut down completely. Yeah, they're, but but and when Trevor and I were taking any plastic. But when Trevor and I were at the um, MMA, they talked about um, regional um, recycling places. We're going to start opening up this next year, so it's like a, 
It's only a few months or not even a year of transition, right, Trevor? Mm -hmm. They were talking about um, a couple places in New York were going to open up, and it was a new, all new industry. Yeah. So, uh, I, and I think one place was in Maine. So we had a couple options um, for the recycling. So it wasn't, it was bad news, but it wasn't, I mean, it was not as depressing as people thought. Yeah. Because um, it was going to be a lag. And so I guess this is the lag right now. Um, but so I don't know what you want to think. We have to talk with Kevin about this and mm -hmm. what Kevin thinks. Right. He, was, <laughs> he needed some rest tonight. I, didn't want I know. To keep him anymore, I know. But, but, yeah. it, it, but it's not a decision that, I mean, I think we have to think about it because yeah. it's only $5 different a ton. Mm -hmm. So you're talking, what'd you say, five or six thousand dollars? Just seven, yeah. just the we'd have to set up a separate place, you gotta do all kinds of outreach, you gotta get people to comply. I, you know, I just I don't know how because and then we get if we do that and then the glass is in the plastic, then you know, we could get kickback on some of our returns. Sure yeah. yeah. Well, and so, a lot of junk winds up and trash winds up in that. I know. I mean, um, our, right. our, our, you know, our uh, transfer station people are really good about making sure, mm -hmm. you know, trying to keep an eye on, you know, the, like plastic bags getting in there. Oh, and stuff there's and all there. kinds of I know, stuff in there. But, Toy plastic trucks, like any, they I think know. it's plastic, it goes in there, it doesn't. Mm. Um, okay, so uh, ZBA request for comments on Eversource hearing, two one nine. What's a ZBA? What is this uh, for? Uh, is I, do you have Eversource? it in your packet? Oh. Should, I thought she puts on your packet uh, for Eversource the addition this of one the new one. antenna to the existing uh, road town radio. Uh, yeah. Pinook Road. Comtec Telecommunications. Yeah. Does this do anything um, for uh, interfering with um, the existing? Antenna, because sometimes you have, um, when you have, I learned that when I had that, to, have, to get certified for the, you know, my radio license, sometimes you have interference because there's too much on the post. That would be my only concern. And I wouldn't, so I was already at tower there, right? This is just adding something to the tower. Right. And so you just want to make sure there's no inter extra interference with anything. You know, if you get mm -hmm. too much, it's, a, it's like having a bandwidth. There's too much activity on the bandwidth. It shuts down other bandwidths. Hmm. I think it's okay. But This is the antenna they're putting on. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. Attaching the additional antenna to one yeah. the existing one. Yeah. I would think that they would have technically be able to be. Mm -hmm. I would just verify that, I think. Yeah. I think technically they should no, know whether it has some kind yeah. of inter interference. I'm sure they figured all that out. Um. Yeah, it looks like it's well above the other antennas, mm -hmm. so. If you look at the schematic. Yeah, because it's saying it's going to be put at um, 119 foot of the 120 foot tower, so it's got to be right there. Yeah, it's right at the top. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know enough comments. about I this. Think this is fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This addition is in support of the grid moder modernization and distribution automated. Nation projects in the Deerfield, Shelburne, and Greenfield locations. There's questions we can ask at the hearing. Yep. I'm in favor of the project as far as I'm mm -hmm. Of course, it's, it's up, supposed to be an upgrade, so. Yep. I'm sure they've checked it out, but that would be the only thing, only comment I have. So this is a, uh, for two-way radio. Does it say what it's for? Whether you know, police, fire, it was municipality. Uh, just says in to. In addition to support the grid. Support just their yeah. own. 
It just says, I don't know, it just says grid modernization and distribution automation for Deerfield, Shelburne, and Greenfield locations. So I'm it's assuming it has to do with their radio Communications systems. within their trucks? Maybe. Or vehicles? Yeah, I'm guessing that might be what oh. it is, David. For Eversource. Okay. Um, the only other thing that, uh, well, there's two other things actually that I had. Um, has, can we just follow up on with Cumberland Farms about what they're doing over here? Mm -hmm. um, yes. You know, just make a few phone, yeah. make a phone call every couple weeks. Yeah. You know, until find find out what's going on. What is it? With the uh, Cumberland Farms, can they, yeah, the they need to get it going? Do yeah, they like just need to get. Sword. Yeah, they need to do something. It's kind of ugly. All right. And I need a voice. I need to find. I mean, to talk to a voice. Yeah. Right. Not a. Not, <laughs> not a. Machine. Not a person. Well, I left messages, and they've changed ownership. You can go to the counter a, over there. Go. <laughs> Thank you. No, you just, no. just. And the realtor, the realtor's not. Just yeah, check. I don't want to talk to the realtor. I want to talk and to their corporate, corporate yes. person. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, put it on the tickler for every couple of weeks until you find to get an answer. Um, and then um, I want to make sure that we cut a check um, to Charlie tomorrow. So there was some discussion on the authorization. We had already discussed this. Charlie has already put hours in inspecting the property and we have a court date of January 3rd so uh, it's a little late not to be authorized and we did discuss this Dave remembers that um, so I just want to make sure the check for Charlie is cut tomorrow okay Diana is it on the uh, warrant or something? yeah it's, it was well, the, it's the payroll sheet I think you oh. had just signed it so I'll save okay. without cutting the check All yeah right. Because he's coming back from Hawaii on the 22nd, and I oh, must be nice. I want to make sure he shows yeah, up January 3rd. It. We have. I wouldn't come back from Hawaii, <laughs> especially with that. I don't want to show up without Charlie. Okay. No. So, do you want me to hang on to this in the book? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you? Unless Dave wants to look at it. Welcome to no. I'll plug it in here. Perfect. So, any other? Things you need to deal with. Okay. Right, so in this, I'm sorry, for this, you're just supportive of this project. Yes. Did you have any? Yes, okay. unless there's any unless you know, there's interference. Any, right, okay. Whatever. No yeah. technical I mean, issues. I as long as there's I, no technical issues. I only issues. know enough to be dangerous. Not, <laughs> okay. I don't know enough yeah. to but know support. anything. <laughs> yes. I, I passed that test just barely, okay. I'm sure. It was mostly right. in protest. You want to hit us with anything? We, we went over I think most, most right? of I mean, it, I just want to remind you that we want to schedule a complete streets upcoming in early January yes. so you know just yep. getting a date scheduled and um, um, we did the we did get the green communities annual report was due the first week of December so that's been put in so we can apply for a green communities grant right. for the spring if we want to yes, and want I would to. assume the energy committee's thinking of what that might right. look like so um, that's done and and we just moving on. We got the um, we got the telemetrics. The telemetrics folks are really bugging us to get. You know, they want to give us money. Everyone just wants to give us money and wants to give us more grants and more work to do, um, which is really wonderful. But it's it's very it. overwhelming. Yes, yes I know. <laughs> yeah, because we have that shed grant. We have the telemetrics. We have. There's one other one that somebody just wrote to me this week and said, "Congratulations, you got the money." Oh, the ADA. We got the ADA grant. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, can we schedule? We have a selectman's meeting on December. I mean, uh, January tenth at five o'clock, and then what's our next meeting after that? Our next regular we had was going to be the fifteenth, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, that's that was David's. You know, next regular day. Okay, when he okay. Wasn't so working. we're going to do the fifteenth, and then we're going to do the 29th? Yeah. Okay. I just and, want to make and sure. And we added the January 10th at five. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And you're you're going to schedule the 23rd for the search committee, right, David? Executive. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Executive. Okay. That has yep. nothing to do with that. Four o'clock. They'll be in the uh, police department. Okay. Same same agenda as today with um, December 23rd. At All right. Um, we re 
so uh, we should have a, our emergency team meeting sometime. We should do, did Chris send, set up, Chris, um, Curtis set up an MVP meeting yet? A core group. Um, I think he's still trying to get that flooding group together, yeah, Carolyn. Cause, and so I don't think he has done a, an MVP. Because the REPC meeting is on January 7th, and that's supposed to be the, we'll be talking about that Homeland Security grant that I got for the flooding. So we should probably have a, try to have a meeting. Oh, before then, oh, that's going to be so hard. All and right, Trevor, we'll, we'll just do it on the 10th. While I'm thinking of this, Trevor, I need to get back from you those hazard mitigation maps. Remember, I'm still trying to get that hazard mitigation stuff, you know, put wrapped back up. And at the last meeting we had, that core group meeting that you came to, you, I think, walked away with the maps and said you were going to look at them and up. I'm pretty sure. Who was it, Karen? Somebody walked away with them, but I think I it was left Trevor. before that meeting was over. No, right. You left. You had to leave early, and you said you would take a look at the maps, and you would you would maybe run them by. It looks, well, when this is over, come we'll look in your office. office. Yeah, because yeah, Kim, I know that. Kim's looking for that, and that's our next. That just <laughs> reminds me of so Carolyn's <laughs> thinking Listen, about the hazard stuff. We have to do the ha we do have it. to finish that up. I know. Um, I saw Kimberly. <laughs> I'm trying. I just saw Kimberly last week. <laughs> We need to, um, yes. I bugged her again, so yeah. we need to And you know, her. it's, you know what I noticed, the River Road stuff, I don't, I didn't see that stuff on there. Yeah, you know, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should We got to update that. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. yes. So anyway, we need to get those maps and finish that up, and we can, we can do that. Okay, so, uh, so on the agenda for the 10th, you're going to put the flood exercise and the hazardous mitigation, okay? Okay. Hopefully. Just... I don't know. We can right now. We yep. can just put it as an update. Yep. But can can you please just find out what's going on with Kimberly? I yes, know yes, Christmas I is did. next week. I did get an update. Yes, we're close. But we need to. That's the last thing. She we need promised to me that. that she was going to get yep. us done. Yep. And I want that done so that yep. we can. This is critical for us. It, it's money. It's real. It's money for our culverts. So we have to get this done. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so on the tenth for those and it's things. been expired since July, so we're in we're in problems. So, and she promised me that she would fix it, uh, work on it. Was there another thing besides those things that you were going to do on the tenth, the ZBA thing? That's the other thing that you yes. wanted to talk about. Okay. So I just hope everybody in TV land has a wonderful holiday season. Yes, nice I can't Christmas believe it. Families and Christmas is coming so fast. Holiday, you're all celebrating, and um, a happy new year. Next week. Maybe this Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. It's the 23rd. Yeah. Hanukkah's the 23rd. Wonderful. So just enjoy your families and have a safe time, and look forward to seeing you again in the new year. More exciting, mm -hmm. fun stuff ahead. Mm -hmm. So all right. motion to adjourn. Make that motion. All those in favor. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you all.